oh, weird. Oh, this is terrible. Um, fucking headphone just went deaf right then. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, anyways. <clears throat> Welcome. This is the Pub Crawlers, another IRS charity workshop, section number three. Uh, I'm Bash. Joining me today is Kevy. Hey, Kevy. That's you, Kevy. Kevy, are you here? <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm, I'm right here. Hi. Hi, that's Kevy. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I see my I see my my like my microphone working, but I have to push my palm. Oh, um, yes, yeah, in Discord, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You just do. Anyways, open. anyways, yeah, yeah. We're, we're all good. All right, so yeah, okay. Anyways, hi, welcome. This is Pub Crawlers. I'm Bash. This is Kevy. We're doing the third section, which is the of the. <laughs> we're doing the third section of the IRS charity workshop that is known as the Employment Issues Course. So we're gonna get started here. We're on their web page. Got our little notes ready to go here. Welcome. I can only imagine there would be employment issues. <laughs> well, yeah, because we have to make a decision between if we're going to have uh, just uh, volunteers or going to have like some employees and some volunteers or just employees. and You know, like there's a mix. Anyways, so mm-hmm. yeah. Welcome to the Employment Issues Course and IRS Guide for Charities. Government Entity Divisions Exempt Organization Office. Hi, I'm Legal, the Stay Exempt Eagle, and I'll guide you Hello, through the legal. here at Stay Exempt. <laughs> this course includes interaction to test your knowledge. You'll need to click on the screen to answer the questions and participate We're aware. in the activity. We've done this. During this course, we'll talk about the various there may be a few questions. for 501c3. We're going to get them all right this questions time. with answers. First, I'll show you how to classify employees, independent contractors, and volunteers for federal tax purposes. Then we'll review how to identify withholding, as well as how to pay and report taxes for your workers. Finally, we'll talk about the employment tax forms for 501c3 organizations and how to use them. Let's meet Bobby. She wants to learn about the tax responsibilities for her 501c3 organization because she has employees. Hi, I'm Bobby. Mm-hmm. And I God damn it. I recently learned that I'm going to just go roll back through that real fast because Stupid Legally Eagle, for the first time ever, the employment uh, went a little too fast. Visions exempt go. 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 Activity. First, I'll show you oh, how crap. to I got, I remember, I got to watch this on review how Twitch. You, yeah, if you want. I got it uh, live. Because I can't hear the sound. Oh, right. Right, right, right. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, if you want, I can just stream the uh, just the thing so you can hear it on there. What? Whatever one you want. How have we done it before? I'm not sure how that was set up with Kitsapai. Um, I stream just the uh web page in the Discord, I believe. But I like the idea of you having to do go. the Twitch. Just watching record Warhammer three stuff. Hell yeah! <laughs> nice. It's good shit, man. It, it's fun. Okay, we are good. Yep, I got the notes. I just want to get the objectives and down so that them. it helps me as we're Bobby. going through it she wants to, learn to about uh, kind of keep it organized. Hi, I'm Bobby, and I run a cancer awareness organization. I recently learned that the IRS treats various workers differently for tax purposes. How can I determine the organization's sure relationship to its workers? Find a worker for federal tax purposes. Well, Bobby, each type of worker requires special treatment under the Internal Revenue Code. Different type of workers so require special treatment the under the Revenue Code. Obligations regarding workers, you have to know what type of workers your organization has: employees, independent contractors, or volunteers. 
The key to classifying these workers is to understand that they are characterized by their relationship with the organization. When looking at the relationship between the organization and the worker, pay special attention to 501c3's right to direct and control the worker. The more control the organization has over the worker, the more likely that he or she is an employee, and the more autonomy or independence the worker has, the more likely he or she is an independent contractor. So, it looks like independent contractors are self-employed and have their own independent trade or business. That's right. Self-explanatory. Yep. <laughs> I was like, how do I write that as a note? <laughs> I was like, it's in the word. <laughs> Broad categories of evidence to help you analyze the relationship. The categories of evidence are behavioral control, financial control, and relationship of the parties. Let's look at how these can be used to determine each classification. I'm just going to write those down. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm getting I, I worse. Voice pretty well, which yeah. is good. Very yeah. nice, very nice, it's very nice. nice. Yeah, I got it figured out after that first mess up. All right. Ready to move on? Yes, sir. What's behavioral All right, control? moving on. How do you quantify it? Behavioral control is how much your 501c3 controls its worker's behavior while he or she completes work-related tasks. You can figure your level of control by considering two factors, instructions and training. Does your 501c3 provide instructions to the worker by setting the time, place, and manner of accomplishing a task? For some workers, we do. What else should I consider? Here's an illustration to make it easier. Click on the respective checkboxes if you use any of the following instructional methods. Do you tell the worker which tools or equipment to use? Do you give them an order or sequence to follow? Do you require the worker to follow an employee manual? Wait, 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 now, wait. Let's look at all, right, all right, I'm going to pause it on that one because I like these like details. It's about the individual worker, but it is an instruction. You need to do it. Well, yeah, it's like, for instance, we have standard operating procedures for certain things. So it's like the people that have to follow that versus the people that don't would be like a very easy way to separate the people that would be an employee versus an independent contractor. If they were doing the same job, if that makes sense. Well, a contractor would be business that's profiting and a separate entity what do you what do you what are you trying to like say difference it... between like a contractor that is a non-profit and then a contractor that is it's like but there's different i don't know wording anyways um I'm going in circles there. The training factor. No, I got you though. Select these check boxes if your 501c3 provides your worker with specific so anyways, instructions for to management. follow, or if you indicate methods he or she should use in completing. Hey, do you have any any question on that though? Mm -mm. You sure? Yeah. Nice. The All task. right, we'll get these training ones wrote down. I like how there's a little timer over there. Provide the worker specific. Man, I cannot type today. Or spell. That's what rough drafts are for. <laughs> <laughs> there's a He's... thought, and then, then there's a refined thought. I like how it's like indicates methods he or she. <laughs> 
if you checked any of the questions on the screen, it suggests that <laughs> the worker that is an employee. Uh, I mean, just use the A. Contract. <laughs> Behavioral control. No, that's very, very straightforward. Here's an example. Does the organization exert behavioral control over Debbie's activities? Click the submit button to check your answer. Debbie is paid to help Marion's organization on the weekends. Marion told her to work at the organization's main office where she uses a computer provided by the organization. Does Marion's organization exert behavioral... Behavior... Behavioral... Behavioral. <laughs> Be oral. Oh, man. Bi okay. oral. Control over Debbie, yes. Right? Yes. 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 We yes. agree. Yeah. Wait, wait. Just <laughs> man. Yes. Yes. That's right, because Debbie must come into the office for the organization and use the organization's computer to work. They're exerting behavioral control over her work. Yay. Click stuff. Play. You should also consider who financial control controls the financial aspects of the worker's activities the organization or the worker. Here are some questions to ask yourself. Has the worker put a significant personal investment into the tools, equipment, or facilities used to do the job? Does the worker maintain a separate office? Does the worker bear the risk of incurring a financial loss in doing the job? Are there many unreimbursable expenses? And does the worker hire and pay helpers? Does the worker advertise and maintain a visible business location? Is the worker paid a flat fee rather than being paid on an hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly basis? Several of these apply to some of my workers. That's good to know. If you answered yes to any of these questions, your worker has more financial control, which points to classification as an independent contractor. Yes. That's all pretty straightforward. I don't think we need to list that. Those are all pretty much just mm -hmm. defining things of what is uh, financially going to separate someone. Um, all of those are just number of ways of saying are they invested individually, not in your thing. You know, like all of those. The the, the very interesting one here is at the very bottom with if is the workers pay a flat fee instead of being paid hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. So it's like they're not uh, on payroll. They're just paid for the service that they provide, whatever that service be. Mm. That Does sounds like... Exert financial control? Go ahead. No, to me that sounds like being a uh, like commission-based person. Mm -hmm. Very much so. so Peace worker. The answer, then but, uh, the button to check it. Is it sustainable? Well, I mean, like, that's just however someone sets up their own business for, a, like, a contracting business. Like, usually they're hired to do a job, and they have a fee that they are willing to do that job for, and then the cost of parts are included, and they bid it, and, mm. yeah. You're familiar with that shit? Come on. A little bit. I mean... It's what you do! All, this, Damn it! This is all new to me. No, no, I meant the contracting stuff. The contracting stuff, that's what you do. I... Eh. I don't get into it as much. Ah, I got you. I got you. So I do a different aspect. Right. This is just that back end side of it. Is there a written contract mm -hmm. specifying employee status? Does your organization provide the worker typical employee benefits, such as health insurance or a pension plan? Can your organization terminate or discharge the worker, or can the worker leave before the task is completed without becoming liable for non-performance? Is the worker's service a key aspect of your organization's regular business activities? For example, a receptionist at a busy drug treatment center scheduling patients, answering the phone, and greeting visitors? A yes answer to any of these questions suggests you classify the worker as an employee. All right, so here's the relationship of the parties. The key questions that determine employee status. Is there a written contract specifying the employee status? Does there... Organization and provide the worker typical employee benefits such as health insurance or pension plan. Can the organization terminate or discharge the worker or can the worker leave before the task is completed without becoming liable for non-performance? Is the worker's service a key aspect of your organization's regular business activities? Employee! Cool. All right, I'm just going to mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. paraphrase I've this a little it. bit. Uh it's hard to get the audio because if I hear you on Twitch, 
I hear double of you. I got you. I got you. I got you. So here, I'm going to go live in the Discord here real quick with where you can hear the audio. You just want to see my notes. Oh, no. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, notes are good, though. All right. That's what I got to do for work. I do write a lot of stuff down. But goddamn, do files, file papers and things. That's what I'm saying. Electronics amazing because then you can just like mm -hmm. <laughs> make it all automated. Like do one thing on your phone and it's like, bloop, 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 I put it on the right spots. Anyways, um, can the organizations terminate or discharge? Or Okay, so termination. Uh, what's a better word for le like quitting a job? Is there like a single word for that that I can't think of? Um, quitting, leaving, resign, resignation. Uh, yeah, I mean that's I guess that's the fancy word for it. Yeah, it's like what that's exactly word. what I was looking for. Fancy word. Resigned. What the fucking fancy word? Resigned just sounds so much better. Yeah, more posh. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, resignation is how you get, like, fancy fired. <laughs> you get resigned to a very comfortable jail if you've done something very bad with a lot of money. Too much of a stretch on that one. <laughs> going in there for a year. It's the work of service of cancer. On good behavior. <laughs> it's, where, it's, it's just where my mind goes. It starts to get a little elastic, you know? It's like, what? Organ or canization. Wow, I can't type. <laughs> Typing better than, 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 than I would. Damn. Well, that's that's nice of you. <laughs> Why are you so dumb? Have you seen my typing? No. <laughs> could you just? Exactly. Could you just? <laughs> Just fix this. Just fix all of this. Yeah, do that. Like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, oh, you're the worst. Okay, so, moving on. Relationships of the party review. Relationship with your organization qualify you as an employee. Select the best answer, then select the submit button oh. and check it. Margaret doesn't receive benefits because she only works part-time for an hourly wage. She has no contract, so she can quit working for the organization at any time she wants. Marianne is thankful because her organization would suffer without Margaret's important filing and record-keeping skills. Hmm. All right, so is she a... Based on the following... So what like, do you think it is? Does Margaret's relationship with Marianne's organization qualify <laughs> her as an employee? I believe so. I have to read things like 20 times before I answer so, like, here's the thing. So, she doesn't receive benefits. Mm -hmm. Darn. But she receives an hourly wage. She, she's, she is not pay, paid a flat fee. Right? But she doesn't have a contract. Right? Mm -hmm. So, she can quit anytime. But that that's... Also, going to be weighed on the fact that her... Organization skills would suffer. So, does that mean Margaret is a key aspect of the organization's regular business since it's filing and record keeping? I'm going to have to say yes. Yeah, but it's based on a good old pat on the back, you know? Oh, good job, by the way. What? That's the way I, I look at it. That's <laughs> the way I look at it. Well, would you say yes or no? Is, like, is she oh, an employee? my back really hurts. Please don't pat, pat my back. No, I'm, we're not talking about backs. You know but saying? is is is, is Margaret really is Margaret a fucking employee? Yes. <laughs> what? What? You should have picked yes forever ago. I was <laughs> just asking you for your answer. I, I told you. I got to read it like 20 times in a row. Uh, <laughs> Even though she doesn't have a contract Ugh. or receive benefits, she can be fired anytime. She can terminate her work anytime. And her work is vital to the organization's regular business activities. So, yeah, she is an employee. Yay, we did good. As employee you did good, sir. Woo! Because you knew it was that, like, since the beginning. Yes. I feel like you did. <laughs> I that no single factor makes the worker an employee like seeing or an employee. one of those reasons was enough for her to be that is what they said earlier so yeah mm -hmm. 
not be relevant to others. Consider but it, again, it's based on a good old little pat on the back. That's all I'm saying. Consider the right to direct and control. And what? Finally, Anyways. Each of the used when <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Putting the evidence together to determine employee or independent contractor, behavioral control, financial control, employment relationship, worker status. So consider the evidence to reach the conclusion. Look at the entire relationship considering the degree or extent of the right to direct and control. Document each of these factors. Now I understand how to classify my workers as employees or independent contractors. But what about my officers and board of directors? Oh, 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 pause. Okay, this is that one that one's really important. I just want to write something. Just writing that on the notes. Boop. There we go. Now we're gonna talk about the difference between board. Oh, you can do this. Of directors. Direct toes. Versus officers. Can't classify themselves. That's a great question, Bobby. The answer is yes. Unlike workers who are classified by weighing various criteria, certain types of workers are automatically classified as employees or non employees by statute. The Internal Revenue Code defines the officers of a corporation, such as the president, vice president, secretary, or treasurer, by as statute. And your 501 they are like a statue of the company. The for tax purposes, if they are paid to perform their duties, a 501c3 shouldn't classify corporate officers as employees if they perform no services or only minor services. And they don't receive, nor are entitled to, compensation. Wait, 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 wait. I just want to clarify. Uh, oh. So even... The Interesting! Even the people who own it the the are considered employees themselves. The corporation as non-employees. So your 501c3 must classify them as For individual for things? For individual reasons? Individualism? Applies if your organization pays its board members to attend board meetings or otherwise compensates them for performing their duties as directors. Select the continue button to learn more. Interesting. I thought it was the other way around. This is a big thing for me. Sorry for like going through that so like fucking dumb faced, but all right. So the directors, right? In our in our situation uh, with the pub crawlers, right? So that'd be like the bartenders, right? Mm -hmm. So if they're paid, then they're an employee. If they're not paid, then they're not an employee but then they're like volunteer. that like hidden role that boss level that we have like that would basically be like directors right so like they're not employees even if they are paid to do the service that, that in wow my question is wow. like, are they are they viable to be paid almost as equal as their counterparts then what do you mean? What do we, we like, if they're considered, you know, a management or so you're saying like, I mean, like, I mean, not a, not a volunteer complete compared to an employee. Well, so, volunteer is not paid, right? Right, exactly. But the board of volunteer is volunteer. That's been around forever. Right, right. But what they're saying is that the board of directors, if they're paid, they are not considered an employee. That's what it said. That's like what? Like I almost want to like. What? Do it again, you know? Hmm. Slide 13, that's a little ways in. It just sucks. Because hey, what's up, Kiss? Ha ha. Yo. What's up, man? Yo, do you want to try something stupid? Can you try and join the Zencaster and see if it, like, makes you a, a thing? Or I don't know if it'll work. Sure. Yeah, give it a shot. Welcome, everyone. This is Kiss, though. Whoever watches this, if ever need whatever. Howdy, howdy. <laughs> All right, yeah. Oh, cool. Dude, it did. Dude, okay, cool. It used to have a big old hiccup with like new things adding in. Yeah, just let me join in. Perfect. Very cool. Very, very cool. Sweet. And where did my notes go? There we are. All right, so we're basically just going through the employee uh, definitions. Uh, what we've covered so far is like employees versus independent contractors. Pretty straightforward and all that. 
right now we're going right. into like board of directors and uh, officers. And something that was kind of a surprise is the fact that directors are not employees, even if they're paid. Really? Yeah. I'm actually going to, I kind of want to like go back all the way. That was slide 13. So I'm going to just skip through a bunch of this. Hi. Hi. What's here's here? And then replay cool. slide 13 now here. This is where we're at. My workers as employees or independent contractors. But what about my officers and board of directors? I see your notes on, Are they in a class by themselves? on yeah. screen now. So we're right here, yeah. The answer is I don't see the slide. Who are classified uh. So oh. I have it pulled up on Twitch. Oh, I have the wrong screen up then. Hold on. There you go. There we go. As employees. And your 501c3 must classify them the same way for tax purposes. I've been trying to like if read it. To perform. So yeah. And then fill in the blanks. So yeah. Um, with, with what the guy's saying. What it's saying is uh, specifically for officers, like a president, a vice president, secretary, treasurer, if they're being paid to perform those duties, they are an employee. If they're not paid, a they're not an employee. Classify corporate officers that makes sense. Employees if they perform no services or only minor services and they don't receive nor are entitled to compensation. But I think a, a big caveat that I didn't make specific on that is that they perform nor, no service or minor minor service. So like, like for instance, people that are like admins in our group that are like here when they are and not so often, like that kind of thing would be a relative for that. Um, not if... I'm just going to type that up to employee. All right. And then here's the important one. Code defines the board of directors of a corporation as non-employees. So your 501c3. Board of directors by the IRS code are not employees. We must classify them as independent contractors or volunteers oh. for tax purposes. So yeah, there we go. That's what we didn't hear the first time. They have to be classified as volunteers or independent contractors. Aha. That's what was not making sense to me. Yeah, it was... Gotta say, what are they? <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, I was like, they cannot be just like not. My thing is, how can you be paid but then be considered a volunteer? That is, like, maybe that's the that's the, uh, the so, yeah, that's so, independent yeah, contract exactly. That's yeah, a, that's what goes through my mind is like that doesn't make sense and it just sounds like a loophole to me. Almost at the same time, but, eh. again, my fucking brain's been stretching here. <laughs> this one yeah, have, is this one really going well. into it? Oh, it is. It is confusing to me. What? How is it? Okay, what's confusing on this part? No, no, no. No, I get this part. So we're ta talking like a triangle, right? I of like responsibility. We're talking like the very, very top, the people that are like the board that make like the big, the big decisions on everything, right? Like how it's how everything's supposed to be like moved. The officers are going to be the people that are like making it just day-to-day -day kind of stuff you know um so the board must either be non-paid volunteers or if they are paid for their services they have to be independent contractors they can't be employees of the charity but officers oh, can wow. be employees so, so the directors so being like bartenders for example so like bartenders in our in our group, would bartenders be considered a separate contractor. No, 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 no. Bartenders would be considered uh, officers in our group. Officers and that what is an officer? So an officer is like um someone that has uh specific responsibilities that are defined by the group itself. But um Basically, like the top tier would be the board of directors. They're the, the highest responsibility, biggest decisions. And then below that would be the officers. They're like the people that like do all this stuff for the uh, organization. And like, then like, below like that. The filing. Um, I that, mean, that, that, that? No, no, 
so like you're thinking too in the weeds on this um and basically i'm uh, we're, like this is just this i mean like this is a very common structure for any kind of corporation um you know you have a board of directors and it's usually a group yes. of people that you set uh the state is, requires a specific amount of people either like one or none or three or something like that you know but um Below the board of directors, you'd have the officers, and they're like your vice president, your president, your secretary, your treasurer, you know, the people that are like doing the day to day kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have your members in your group who are just the people involved, like the, the, the thing that make up the organization. Um, but. Right. I mean, well, the. Yeah. People below the director. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Mm -hmm. So, like in our group, like the barflies and the regulars. Those would all be members, right? And then the admins, the bartenders, the people that like, you know, delete the spam and like make sure shit's like being like taken care of every day. The people that show up every day that are in and out, you know, those would be the officers. And then like the board of directors would be like the people that make the decisions on like how are our articles of it association going to be organized what are they going to say what do, how do we organize our entire structure our standard operating procedures those people would be the board of directors does that make sense now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right cool let's move on thanks man no worries no worries I'd, I'd like to make sure it's clear this applies if your organization pays its board members to attend board meetings or otherwise compensates them for performing their duties as directors so that 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 follow up was the board of directors must be volunteers or independent contractors. They're independent contractors if they're paid to show up to the meeting or to do their services. Select the continue button to learn more about categorizing officers. More broadly, the term officers for federal tax purposes includes anyone who holds a position of trust, authority, or command within an organization. There you go. Note that many 501c3s have officers who are volunteers and work without compensation. The 501c3 may pay these officers reimbursement or an allowance for out-of-pocket expenses. So if the 501c3... But then would they be an employee? ...to attend a convention representing the 501c3... Mm, that's... Mm. ...they might pay for the trip. Okay. Similarly, a 501c3 may provide a monthly allowance to an officer for automobile use. There are two methods your organization may use to pay an account for these reimbursements. This is interesting. The accountable and non-accountable methods. Huh. This is treated differently for tax purposes. Can you give me an example of the difference? Sure. Substantiated deductible business expenses made under accountable plans may be excluded from an officer's or employee's gross income and aren't subject to withholding and employment taxes. Under a non-accountable plan, however, amounts paid are included in the officer's or employee's gross income and are reported on Form W-2. The amounts are subject to all applicable employment taxes. Use this link to irs.gov for definitions and... Interesting. Okay. So... I almost want to play that one again. <laughs> not not because I didn't get it, but I really, really... Here, I'm going to publication 3.5. Or 5.3.5. Five, five. I'm going to check this one out. Oh, that one's not that bad. This one? <laughs> no, no. It's only one page. And it's mostly in Spanish. And half of it's Spanish. <laughs> oh, I'll have to brush up. Shit. <laughs> All right. Um... Mm -hmm. Okay, so 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 kids by so 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 what do you think? Uh, so I, I didn't realize that the uh, officers can cannot be compensated even for what they do. No, 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 no. That's wrong. That's wrong. No, that is they wrong. Can be, that no, is wrong. They can be based on the board of directors. No, 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 mm. no. I mean, oh. there's like. <laughs> That that last part okay. based on the board of directors, oh, sure, but like that other part, like what? I'm sorry, why do you think that? Where did that come from? That's probably from the previous slide. Why why do you think uh officers can't be paid? Directors no, I, I, cannot I, I, be saying, employees. No, I'm, I'm that's not it. saying that they can't be paid. 
But I was saying that it's the possibility of not being paid. You, you know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. I am so confused. But I'm I'm going too deep into thought, I guess. I need to I think so. Take it back um, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So because officers can definitely be paid and then they would be an employee. So I think Yeah, I think you're mixing well, something up here. So directors, board of directors cannot be employees of the charity. Officers are either employees if they're paid for their services or not employees if they're not paid for their services and they don't perform yeah. major services. Board of directors has to either be unpaid volunteers or independent contractors. That's just board of directors. But they're never employees. They're never employees. Right, right. The officers are subject to whatever the operating procedures set by the board of directors are. Uh, they're usually all done together. And you can, depending on the state, you can have someone be in multiple positions. You can have like the vice president, which is an officer, also be the like chairman of the board. You know what I mean? So like, it's just like how things are broken down for like decision making and responsibility uh, separation. But one of the interesting things here that this is talking about with officers and statutory workers is I, to my understanding here. So we're talking about accountable plans and non-accountable plans and how they're reported on uh, the, the taxes. So this is money that is used to reimburse someone for either spending their own money or spending their own time doing stuff for the charity. And I'm pretty sure to my understanding, the accounts pan, pan or I'm excuse me, accountable plans would be for volunteers like that's the structure that would work for our volunteers because you're paying them back for like either travel or time or things like that but you're not paying it to like them as a wage but if you are if they're an employee they're going to have the non-accountable plans which is included in their W-2s, and they would put on their like tax return at the end of the year. Does that make... I think we need to play this slide again because I took it as this was... <clears throat> I mean, they said amounts paid, but the way I took it or put it in the frame in my mind was like if they were to get paid like income, pretty much. If this would be their... This, so, yeah, yeah. If they were paid a, a salary pretty oh. much or something like that. See, I think there's... Uh... It did say earlier, if they're paid a flat fee, then they're an independent contractor. If they're paid an hourly wage or a monthly wage or a salary of some si- some kind, they're a, a employee. So what? I'm gonna go. I am gonna play this one again though. Uh, we're on slide 14. I'm just gonna. Doop, 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 doop. Here's a Let's go. Now I understand how to classify my workers as employees or independent contractors. We'll just do both. What about my office 13. Board of directors? Are they in a class by themselves? That's a great question, Bobby. The answer is yes. Unlike workers who are classified by weighing various criteria, certain types of workers are automatically classified as employees or non-employees by statute. The Internal Revenue Code defines the officers of a corporation, such as the President, Vice President, Secretary, or Treasurer, as employees, and your 501c3 must classify them the same way for tax purposes if they are paid to perform their duties. A 501c3 shouldn't classify corporate officers as employees if they perform no services or only minor services, and they don't receive nor are entitled to compensation. So we understand that so far. Hmm. Also, another thought about the officer part. Yes. So, could you perform a lot of services and not get paid? Technically, and then would yes. Would you be considered an employee? No. Because, so, like, what it did say is if it's entitled to compensation, which would mean if we had something in our bylaws or our articles of association where it's like, if you do this, you should be paid this, and let's say they do that, and then we don't pay them. That would mean that they were entitled to that compensation. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah that 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 made sense to me. But for instance, like let's say someone shows up every once in a while, but they don't have like a required responsibility to show up at a specific time to do a specific thing. 
but their input still it matters, you know, like not compensating them would be okay because then they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't be considered an employee. They wouldn't have to worry about anything like that, but they could like kind of like be a part of it as much as they wanted to or whatever their limited that, kind of involvement is. So they would, yeah, they, they would be like volunteers and, yes. and, uh, you would, oh shit. Go ahead. You can work oh, it out. Words escape me all the time. You can work it out, bro. But if the board, of, here we go. If the board of directors decide, like, a vote not to compensate this person, but they still want their input, they can also decide that as well. Right? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. That that that, that was what I thought. I, that's all I'm saying is giving, I guess, another perspective. But in my opinion, you know? I think it's more important to have that already determined in the Articles of Association and the bylaws so that the board's oh, yeah. not making that decision on their own every year or however often they meet. That, that seems like the better way to do it, for sure. Um, as much as we can like preset a, in stone ahead of time so that we don't have to have people like argue about it later down the road, I think it'd be <laughs> better for us. Cool if I do the next part here? Yep, I'm ready. Yeah. By contrast, the code defines the board of directors of a corporation as non-employees. So your 501c3 must classify them as independent contractors or volunteers for tax purposes. This applies if your organization pays its board members to attend board meetings or otherwise compensates them for performing their duties as directors. Select the continue button to learn more about categorizing officers. See that graphic that they put up there whenever they did the last bullet point does not help at all. Oh, this makes no sense. This makes yeah. no fucking sense. It should I've been be. To like... <laughs> it it should. <laughs> so like, this so circle, stuff. this circle should be right here, and it should be pointing to two arrows down here. Volunteers should be down here. Independent contractors should be down here, and board of directors should be right there, basically. Yeah. Or the arrows <laughs> should be going towards the circle, I guess, and then like just put board of directors here and independent contractors. There. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? That's. <laughs> that is bad anyways okay all right cool to move on to this this next one was the main one we wanted to go over again so this is the attention yep. one more broadly the term officer for federal tax purposes includes anyone who holds a position of trust authority or command within an organization note that many 501c3s have officers who are volunteers and work without compensation the 501c3 may pay these officers reimbursement or an allowance for out-of-pocket expenses. I'm just oh. going to pause there for a second. Okay. That's... Okay. So there's two details here. Yes. And I can see where we both got... Uh, where both of our ideas on the next slide came from. Because there's the part about out-of-pocket expenses, and then the first bullet point, you know, just about the volunteers there. You know what's really hard for me to grasp? The difference... What's that? The difference between a salary and an allowance. And I think what it is, is like saying we're going to pay you X amount of mo money, X amount of time, right? Or whatever. Mm -hmm. Versus you get X amount of money for these allowed things. I think that's kind of the difference here. Does that make sense? Hmm. Like you can use this account yeah. for things that perpetuate the organization versus you just get money to use and put in your own bank account. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? It's like, yeah, it's like you're using funds of the group to perpetuate stuff for the group. Or you're say, being paid. Okay, we have 500 bucks in savings. Go out and buy a bunch of. We need. Uh, you could use these for mugs, beer, and a whole bunch of liquor. Right, right. You can go have a giant party tonight. Well, like let's say that say like you know at our annual at our annual meetup. Yeah, I could like here. I'll 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 put that all in together here at our annual meetup. Let's say we have like a, a bank account that has tied directly to like our spending account for the group right right 
certain people within the group would be allowed to use that 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 like actual bank card like go and then like go to the, like let's say we're gonna go to um a restaurant and like rent out a room for the whole group to come in and like eat and stuff then they can like use oh. that for like that kind yeah. of stuff you know um like they can have like uh accounts set up that way versus us just directly paying them However, then there's out-of-pocket expenses. Like, for instance, um, like me buying stuff for things to operate. Like the Zencaster thing alone, that costs money. That's an out-of-pocket mm-hmm. expense for myself. So technically, we could put it in where, like, if someone spends something of their own money, they could get that exact amount of money back from, like, the group's funds also. But they're not being paid just for doing their job. So I think Got that's, it. I think, I think, I, I want to look more into that, but I think that's the big <laughs> difference between allowance and salary. I'm a little, I'm a little gray hey, on that one. If these videos stay this detailed, I'm sure they'll go over it. That's okay, hopefully so, the hopefully so. That I haven't missed. <laughs> Kevin, do you have any sounds like I have. questions? I'm good, man. All right. You go ahead. All right. Uh, actually, uh, give me a sec. I want to take these down. I was. Yeah, I'm actually going to write, uh. Who are volunteers? Oh, the second bullet point refers to the volunteer. Okay, yep, yep, I got it. All right, cool. Yeah, honestly, like retyping that out really kind of reaffirms that for me. Yeah, typing out that second line mm-hmm. actually like made a lot click. Put all right. it all in place and settled it. Nice. Cool to move on to the next? Yep. I am ready. Sweet. So if the 501c3 requires an officer to attend a convention representing the 501c3, they might pay for the trip. Similarly, a 501c3 may provide a monthly allowance to an officer for automobile use. There are two methods your organization may use to pay and account for these reimbursements and allowances, the accountable and non-accountable methods. Each is treated differently for tax purposes. All right, so we're clear so far? Yeah. All right, I just wanted to... So... I think it actually did touch a little bit on what you were uh, wondering about there, about the difference between an allowance and, well, not so much about the salary, but they did say, like, you can get an allowance for, their example, car car funds or whatever, monthly. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's exactly what I was kind of thinking there is that it's like, it's not paying you that you then, then spend on your car. It's like paying you specific, like you get a, spend it on that specific thing kind of yeah yeah i assume for the organization right right right. like you have like like i'm not saying we would but like you could have like a (laughs) gas allowance or like um fucking depending on how specific it is you could have like even like a like bus card allowance or like local transit allowance or something like that yeah i find it really interesting that it has non-accountable as a hyphen here and then google's like no that's one word you dumbass (laughs) It looks way better hyphened. Fuck you, Google. <laughs> we're doing it my way. I'm, I'm going with the IRS on this one. This is this is the one air that we're going to give them. Okay, uh, so... <laughs> I mean, there's been a few, like, on every single one. I should actually kind of reach out. I really should reach out to them. Um, anyways. Can you give me an example of the difference? Sure. Substantiated deductible business expenses made under accountable plans may be excluded from an officer's or employee's gross income and aren't subject.
I almost want to play that again. I want to hit, I want to get that word for word. Go for it. And cuz like I was just I, what? Yeah, they really need a fucking <laughs> back button. The term officer. Note that many 501c3s have officers who are volunteers and work with pension representing the 501c3. Do it. Damn it. Did it mute itself? And aren't sub Damn it, it missed! <laughs> you missed what? Uh, I'm like trying... It's, it's like fucking weird to do this thing. Honestly. It, it is. And I missed the thing that I was trying to get to. What? Look, so... More broad... Is the same organization. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like man. the ones that had the little slidey bar, actually. No. Why is it different every time? <laughs> oh my god, I just realized it's like fucking different controls every fucking time. have officers who are volunteers and work without compensation. The 501c3 may pay officers reimbursement or an allowance. Are you guys good to move on from this? Shut up. So, the 501c3 requires an officer to attend the convention. <laughs> We've been trying. You can be compensated for out of pocket expenses. Similarly, if you're required to be somewhere, the 501c3 may provide a monthly allowance to an officer for automobile use. <laughs> so. There are two methods your organization may use to pay and account for these reimbursements and allowances. So, these are the methods to pay. And account. All right. This is where I want to listen. The accountable and non accountable methods. Each is treated differently yeah. for tax purposes. Can you give me an example of the difference? Sure. Substantiated deductible business expenses. May Substantiated deductible business expenses. Paid <clears throat> under accountable plans may be excluded from an officer. Pulse guys, just so you know. Or employees' gross income and aren't. It's paused again. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Yeah, I was typing. I'm I'm literally typing word for word what he just said. <laughs> I'm glad it saves me from doing it. Oh no. Damn. That looks like a different line. All right. And then non accountable. Subject to withholding and employment taxes. No withholding or employment taxes. What is that noise? Under a non-accountable plan, however, <laughs> amounts paid are included in the officer's or employee's gross income and are reported on Form W-2. The amounts are subject to all applicable employment taxes. Use this... <laughs> a 
cuntable. Nice. <laughs> So that's both ends. That means the person making the money and the organization paying them are both being taxed, both the, the employer and the employee, if it's a non-accountable plan. Ew. That's why this is going to be important. Oh, no, that's why this is only one page. An updated <laughs> version of this form, instruction, or publication is being finalized, and it will be posted here soon. We apologize for the inconvenience. <laughs> Please note that the latest draft forms of some will be posted here. Oh. We, oh, my God. And then all forms and then maybe some forms. Okay, so they're like, it might be here, but it might be here, but it should be here. But here's another link to the <laughs> same thing. <laughs> here's them all. <laughs> Ah, oh. thank you. Thank wow. you. How many pages? There's they can't make this look any more This is made. digestible as fuck. <laughs> wow. How oh my god. Not so much for me. <laughs> there's only 45. 45. There's okay. yeah, there's only, only. 45. Only. <laughs> I actually am going to bookmark this. 1114 <laughs> files. Oh, they oh, just oh linked the God. same thing. They... <laughs> no, there's 20,000 in that last one. It was prior. Oh, there's prior 20, years. It's, it's, it's all prior years. It's all oh, prior years. Oh. <laughs> there's only 2,600. <laughs> only. 1,100. Oh, those are the draft know. ones. These are the finalized. Good thing we don't need all of this. Uh, uh, well, eventually, I might read them out just for fun. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. You guys good to move on? Mm -hmm. Yep. Link to irs.gov for definitions okay. and other information on reporting reimbursements. Publication 535 includes finer details. Workers categorized as independent contractors, not as employees, may also fall under the subsection of statutory employees. The following are considered statutory employees. A full-time traveling or city salesperson who solicits orders from wholesalers, restaurants, or similar establishments on behalf of a principal. The merchandise sold must be for resale, like food that's sold in a restaurant, or for supplies used in the buyer's business. A full-time life insurance agent whose principal business activity is selling life insurance and or annuity contracts for one life insurance company. An agent driver or commission driver engaged in distributing meat, vegetables, bakery goods, beverages other than milk, and laundry or dry cleaning services, <laughs> and a home worker performing work on materials or goods furnished by the employer. Select the continue button to learn more about your volunteers. I like how they huh. did have to clarify. The beverage can't be milk. She can't sell that raw milk, man. Oh no. <laughs> Watch you down. Interesting. Home worker performing work on materials. First my foot. Yes. All right. We have many workers who are volunteers. How should we treat them for tax purposes? From time to time, some 501c3s may provide volunteers with awards or gifts. In general, if these are non-cash items of nominal value, such as a ham around the holidays, your organization shouldn't count these items as taxable wages. But be careful. If your father That's not cool because nominal value is definitely subjective. Yeah, I was going to say, what's, what's nominal value? What's nominal value to a billionaire versus someone that lives on the streets? <laughs> exactly. Like, that's nowhere, nowhere. That's just a blank fucking statement. That's dumb. I don't like that. That's just a way to be like, mm, no, you didn't. Uh, you awarded too much, and we're gonna uh, uh, fucking audit. Yeah, it gives you gives them a <laughs> lot of leeway. Uh huh. Sit there fucking arguing for a few years on what the word nominal means. All right. <laughs> But where, 
Beware of giving cash items such as gift certificates or any other taxable fringe benefit. No gift cards. Okay. Say when, when I worked at a grocery store, some employees got caught stealing the e gift cards. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. The funny thing, the funny thing on that though is, they're so easy to track if they're stolen. So like, they go to use it and like, boop, mm. they're like, yeah, oh, true. cool, that's where you are. <laughs> 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 I used to do stuff on the other end of it and like, yeah. Oh shit! Cra crazy easy. You must consider those items as taxable wages. What's the problem with giving cash or gift certificates? Giving a volunteer cash will inadvertently put them in the category of employee or independent contractor, and the organization will have to. Of course. I'm gonna put that in bold. Oh shit. All right, yeah, I make. I mean, that's uh, uh, totally makes sense. Yeah. Same reporting and withholding requirements for this worker as it would for any employee or independent contractor. We'll talk about those tax responsibilities later in this course. Select the continue button to move forward. Let's look at an example. Knowledge check. Should the 501c3 treat Melanie as an employee or independent contractor? Select the best answer, then select the submit button to check it. Melanie gets paid a salary for working on a community or working on community relations. She works 40 hours per week in the organization's office and she uses company equipment to track and recruit volunteers. She also has an email address from the organization and has to follow guidelines for employees while at the office. Should the 501c3 treat Melanie as an employee or independent contractor? Uh, I'd definitely say an employee. Kevin? She gets paid the salary. She's there for 40 hours a week. Yeah. Everything she uses is from the government, or not the government, well, organization. She has to follow the guidelines for employees. It doesn't say huh. that she, she like flat fee based or hourly. Uh, she, she, she works 40 hours per salary. week. She uses salary or hourly. She gets paid, uh, a, she gets paid a salary. Oh, right here. Okay, okay. So that's, in that last line too, that's yeah. Thing. I would say that's follow guidelines for thinking employees. employee as well. Interesting. So. Yes. Because an independent contractor really, I mean, there's no question. There's yeah. Reason yeah. they're a contractor. Yeah, she's definitely an employee. Ha ha! That's right. Woo woo! We do well. Here's another example. Should the 501c3 treat Phil as an employee oh, or independent Phil. contractor? Interesting. Phil, a computer programmer, is hired by a 501c3. The organization pays him a flat amount to complete a one-time project. It's not clear how long it will take to complete the project, and he isn't guaranteed a minimum payment for the hours spent on the project program. The organization provides Phil with no instructions beyond the specifications for the final product. Based on this information, the 501c3 treat him as an employee or an independent contractor. What Sounds you... like an independent contractor to me. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we're right. Yeah. His employment is not long term. He is, does not work in an office that is provided, and he does not work for an hourly rate. He's also not uh, subjected in to their example, standards. Should the 501c3 treat Donna as an employee or non employee? Select the best answer, then select Ooh, the Ooh, this one's going to be more fun. Check it. An organization that distributes secondhand clothing to impoverished communities around the world has hired Donna as vice president. She'll receive a fair salary for managing the international logistics for their operations in Asia. Should the 501c3 treat Donna as an employee or non employee? Wait, 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 wait. As vice president, so that means. She's an officer. Well, she can she can be either. 
she can be a non-employee or she could be an employee. She gets paid. She gets paid, so she can't be an unemployed. Well, she she made a she did, she makes a fair salary, but she's also been donated secondhand clothing. No, no, no. That Which that that's just what the organization does. Oh, oh. oh she shit. she does nothing with the, like she like so she just manages the logistics in Asia. Oh, yeah, then that's definitely. An and she's paid a salary for it. I and would say that's an employee. Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, wait, no, but can't officers be considered as volunteers? Yes, but not if they're paid. So that means. Yeah, not if they're paid. paid. Okay. She's yeah. paid. Yeah, yeah. Donna's duties as vice president combined with her salary make her an employee. And that makes sense. Yeah. That's an that's a big thing that we're we're not like covering so much though, is uh it's also her responsibilities. She's the vice president as well. So like if they weren't paying her, that would be one of those situations where it's the entitled compensation that we talked about earlier. Have reported mm-hmm. withholding responsibilities for this gift to Tammy. Select the best answer. Thank Tammy you. is one of the community shelter's most dedicated and diligent volunteers at the organization. Oh, and the organization wants to recognize her efforts. Well, volunteers are usually awarded certificates or plaques. The organization believes Tammy's efforts merit special recognition. They award her tickets to see a concert by her favorite band. Wow, good job, Tammy. Does the 501c3 have reporting and withholding responsibilities for this gift to Margaret? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're getting a little bit more gray area that, here. Yeah, that was a little bit muddy. Organizations may pay these officers for... No, we're not talking about officers. No, 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 volunteers. Organizations may provide non-cash items of nominal value as awards or gifts. I, yeah, it's it's, not like it, here's it's nominal not like value. Like, Fucking nominal it's value. Like, uh... It's not like it's a gift card. It's not like she could take his tickets to spend at. Yeah, it's not cash. She can't put it in her bank account. So well, it, she's out in the parking lot scalping them. But this is my problem. <laughs> Fucking bands, like at a concert, those are stupid expensive, in my opinion. I think those tickets are crazy fucking expensive. But that's just me. That's just me. You know, like. Are they expensive when this was made? I don't. <laughs> it says this was last updated in uh, November of last year. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I'm I'm going to have to say no to this. I I don't think that this is uh a reporting responsibility. However, it might be yes, I might be wrong. I don't I think say it is. certain gifts can you can be considered an yeah. employee. Well, no, 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 no. So. That, it's not cash. It's not cash. But no, even gifts. No, 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 they no, no. You got to be careful. It, it said specifically giving cash or gift certificates, gift cards, things that can be treated like cash. Or taxable fringe benefit. Exactly. But how are you going to tax a concert ticket? But yeah. May provide volunteers with non-cash items of nominal value. As awards as or gifts. As awards or gifts. It's not re- like they're giving her a sports car, though. Right. Did you... <laughs> Which like that's not like that's that's nominal. To me. Just, you know, give me a sports. I feel like, like online <laughs> ordering thing. and buying. It's you're you're taxed that way. What? We're not uh, worried that we're you're, we're not worried about how they bought the goddamn tickets. We don't even care. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're just saying that the, 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 the fact them. that they had to give them like giving them to her like they purchased them from some source doesn't matter where, but they would have to purchase them from the funds of the group. So the funds of the group went to her as an award. Like a non, For, yeah. They're like it, like it's a community shelter, Employee you know. Month. So yeah, it's I, like it's it's a reward. I really think it's a no. I really think it's a no. I'm gonna lean no. This I'm gonna this say one. no as well. All right. Oh, what? so here this is the that that's not what was in this description. When they mean nominal, they just mean monetary value of any sort. So if it has any monetary value, so. That's the definition of nominal they're using. Any numerical value. <laughs> Good to know. But I mean, like, I thought that's what, what they I said give her a pen but... that has the, I guess I was the wrong company then. brand on it. I was talking about like, you know, you could be considered an employee. You know. Okay, I'm just gonna Never Google mind, this. But I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. That's what. <laughs> No, not we real. All learn something every day. Not real first. No, no, not real. <laughs> no. So, um, I'm taking kind of crappy notes right now. Define monetary. So, <laughs> of relating to money. God damn it. Okay. All right. That's what I thought. I just want to make sure I'm not. Th- 
<lacht> Fein, Na, haben wir noch. Check. Ja. Alright, we need, we need more. Equal to the interest rate. What? Formal? Paper? Paper value? Now I'm even more confused. So trifling, like insignificant. A, a cash value. So nominal, uh, trifling, insignificant. Um, so items of insignificant value. So like the pen that you just talked about? No. But apparently a concert ticket is significant enough. I do not like that there's not a hard line. There should be a fucking hard line of this specific value above or below. It's called yeah. loopholes. Oh man! <laughs> oh, I don't like that. It should just it should just be explicit. It well, should just it say you can't well, do more than this specific but value. It's always to the discretion of the board of directors. Of what we determine, so we determine of the nominal value. No, because it's no, based. No, we don't determine no, the, the value. IRS you, does. You decide. They have what a value. Kind of gifts. You I'm just give. no. I'm just saying you they have. No, no. They, they on their no. system in their algorithm they have a, a number that's like okay this is nominal this is not you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. and and they're not telling us and I don't like that. Well, I mean they it. I feel like it's at What's the same the time they have a public? right to audit you. Right, 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 right. Like, that, have, that, that's have, that's re, right that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. That's and I totally agree. That, but what I'm trying to say is, to my uncle, bro. Yeah, abs man, uh, absolutely. For that shit. Right, 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 right. That's so, that, that's relevant and has like that, <laughs> absolutely totally agree with that being um, something that should exist and and is good. But what I'm saying okay. is they're not making the specification explicit. No, it's true. No, I I get your point, but that's the thing, dude. Uh, Never mind. <laughs> what if one of the IRS agents is like, well, fuck you, a pen is uh, fucking uh, monetary okay. value. <laughs> well, I'm sure they can I also audit on themselves. The I'm, getting, I'm getting worked up over there. So yeah. Depends on... I would say that's very petty. Right. But... I would say a, I, I kind of think mean, it's petty over I, the I concert boss, ticket. That's stupid. And I would be like, no, don't do that. That's stupid. And that's just like, you know. I guess going back to the question of should it should should it be reported? Honestly, yeah, it should. So that's that's why it was it's, the yes. It's true. It's true. Filing is always important. Because even if it's like, I mean, that was like the first slide no, thing no, we did was really? cover covered that shit. All right. Do we? Are, for Tammy though, now she's an employee and has to. Yep. No, 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 no. She's not an employee. She's not because it wasn't cash. She's close to it. No, oh. it, no, it's not. No, no, you, you're getting it confused with if they give her a cash, uh, that could like calm the late the process. I mean, but they gave her an award, like and that award as a gift has to be taxed as a gift, which has to be associated with a value, and then that value has to be taxed on the recipient. Is what they're saying. Th does Tammy have no say in this? So no, basically, topic, don't right? give out turn concert tickets is what I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, it, it, it does make sense a little bit, Um, but I think it should just be of any value or a specific value. It's, it's kind of stupid that it says nominal value, and then we get a no because it's a monetary value. I don't like that. All right, re ready for the recap? I'm ready for the recap. Mm-hmm. So far, we saw that different types of workers require different types of treatment under the Internal Revenue Code, and that your organization must determine what types of workers it has, employees, independent contractors, or volunteers. We also saw that the key to classifying these workers is to understand that each type is characterized by its relationship with the organization. I pointed out that the key aspect of the worker-organization relationship is whether the 501c3 has the right to direct and control the worker, or does the worker decide how the job will be done. More organizational control over the worker indicates that the worker is an employee, while more worker independence suggests that the worker is an independent contractor. Then we looked at the three categories where this control is shown, work task-related behavior, 
financial burden and risk, and the perception of the relationship with regard to such things as benefits and contractual obligations. The more control that either party exercises in either of these areas determines whether the worker is an employee or an independent contractor. We also discussed how statutes mandate that workers serving as 501c3 officers are employees while officers who hold minor roles and receive no payment are not considered employees. Members of your board of directors are not employees. Finally, we examine the volunteer workforce and how your organization must be cautious when rewarding their service. Click the continue button. <laughs> I well think done. it's saying that just You've because we got that one wrong. Behavior, yep. <laughs> you know, it's like answering your own question. Right. A worker is an employee, an independent contractor. Shit, or read your mind, dude. You've also learned it's like, we already know you're going to get this wrong, so let's just make sure. <laughs> so they do it beforehand. <laughs> Those motherfuckers. Depending on the nature of their work and oh, sneaky Phil. And you've learned about the hazards of giving I mean, cash items fill. or any other taxable fringe benefit to your volunteers. Select the continue button to move forward. Awesome. Ready? Yep, yep. Is there anywhere I can go for help if I can't decide if a worker is an employee or an independent contractor? Yes. Perfect. If you prefer, the IRS will determine a worker's classification for you. You can request a ruling by sending form SS8 Determination of worker status for purposes of federal employment taxes and income tax withholding to the IRS. Also, consider consulting your accountant or attorney for assistance. Note that federal and state mm. agencies classify workers based on the facts of each case and the applicable law. Because of this, IRS determinations may differ from determinations made by state government agencies. If you plan to classify some of your workers as independent contractors, you may want to obtain separate rulings from the state agency and the IRS. Select the continue button to move forward. All right, so hold on one second. I'm a... So in the case that the IRS determination differs from the state <coughs> government agency, who triumphs in that case? The IRS? I think it just depends on where the context is. Uh, yeah. So like within the federal context, it's the theirs. And within the state context, it's theirs. But I do know that the state supersedes the federal if there's a conflict between what those definitions are. Oh, okay. Um. Damn, so each state has... Okay. Yeah, every state is very different. Every state is very different. Yeah, yeah that's why, um, like, going back to something we call it almost every video, is, like, choosing the state is the biggest decision on how all of yeah. this is organized. Um, oh, shit. Also, I mean, we, you, he's even saying, like, consult accountant or attorney, you know, like... Oh, yeah, so, like, that that's a very, very, very necessity point um yeah, like, like once we get all our shit organized goal. we're not gonna we're not gonna talk to anybody until we have everything fucking done in our opinion and then we send it to them to review and tell us what we did wrong and then we fix it double check with them again and then we'll send it to the irs and most likely it's gonna have to be an attorney or uh something of that sort in the state that we're fine founding it in so that they can like be legal on it if that makes sense um but then that would again be something that we can talk about how we want to organize um however i just want to put one more, more note down here possible conflicts obtain separate employees in the state and iris Any questions on this stuff? Sorry, just no. two more seconds. Hold on. You're good? Smug motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Tammy uh -oh. beside? Uh-huh. Tammy, huh? 
<laughs> Goddamn Tammy. All right, you ready? He's asking some good questions. But anyways, yeah, I'm ready. Yep, yep. Okay. Now that I know who is who, can we talk about my 501c3's tax-related responsibilities regarding each type of worker? Sure, Bobby. Let's start with employees oh, and the organization's fuck. duty to withhold and pay taxes for them. Like other employers, 501c3's that pay wages to employees must pay federal employment taxes on those wages. These taxes are Federal Income Tax and Federal Insurance oh, yes. Contributions Act, known as FICA taxes. Note that, that 501c3's sense. are normally exempt from paying Federal Unemployment Tax Act or FUTA tax. Your 501c3 generally must withhold and pay federal income tax from its employees' wages. 501c3 shouldn't withhold income tax for statutory employees. For more information, see Publication 15, Circular E, Employer's Tax Guide, and Publication 15A, Employee Supplemental Tax Guide. To figure out how much federal income tax to withhold, employers should ask employees to complete Form W-4, Employees Withholding Allowance Certificate. Ask each new employee to complete and sign a W-4 by his or her first day of work. Keep the copy on file and send a copy to the IRS if the IRS directs you to do so in a written notice. If a new employee fails to provide a completed Form W-4, your 501c3 should assume single status with no withholding allowances. Select the continue button to move forward. <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's kind of it's kind of funny because, like, imagine filling out your, you know, that, that information. It's like, it says at the top, like, pub crawlers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it would be kind of funny to, like, fill out, like, oh, yeah. You know, I got to, you know. Love it. Those expenses. I ah, just, anyways. Yeah, um, I, I just you think could. it's pretty neat that they're, uh, um, not neat, but it's very helpful that they're uh, exempt from the unemployment tax. Oh, wow. Wait, where does it say that? It's the third Should bullet on the first that? bullet. Ah, oh, I see. 501c3s oh, are exempt from paying um, federal un. Unemployment tax assurance or something like that. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not good with acronyms. Here, I'll just pull it up. No, you don't. You don't have to do all that. I just. I want to make. I I don't want to like mislead. You know, federal unemployment tax. Yep. Uh, that, I I would have taken your word. I never knew that. Yep. Cool. Um, and I'm gonna look through these guys. Oh, I've already seen this one in a subset of some of the other ones. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. That so that link just looks like it had extra shit at the end. It has 15 A. Um, yeah. You yeah. Just take out. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the room link's broken. Ah <laughs> uh, man. Okay. I I should just be taking notes on the things that they did wrong and send it to them and be like, um, when we submit, <laughs> these better be fixed. Can you define nominal? <laughs> oh my God, we fixed all these. Stop. We found all these well, that depends on what triggering means in the state. Ah! Depending on the state. The state of mind, so. or the state of being, or the state of location. No, I'm just kidding. Um, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, anyways, five hundred one c's, five hundred one c threes should not withhold income tax for statutory employees. Um, okay. But what about statutory workers? Because it said statutory employees were like full-time salesperson, full-time insurance agent, agent drivers, and home workers. Question, my question is, what would the salesperson sell? What is that? Um. Just thinking. If you know, that's like, what your organization is about. Definitely you know. not milk. Can't be milk. <laughs> yep, can't be milk. Cannot be wrong. It can't... It, well, I feel like it could be milk, but it has to be not raw milk. I don't it's know. Like the slide said you know? milk. Open up a coffee shop. <laughs> Pub crawler coffee shop. There you go. It's got a mini. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. We're not talking about that right now. We're talking about this. Are we though? No, I'm just kidding. 
you know stop it stop it stop it no you're right but yeah continue <laughs> i'm trying to get down some good notes here but i feel like they're just not cutting it no you're good like this is this is pretty dry but this is very important let me explain yes. how they work FICA taxes go towards Social Security and Medicare. Your 501c3 must withhold and pay these taxes from employees' wages, with one exception. If your organization pays an employee less than $100 in any calendar year, then no FICA taxes are withheld for that employee. A 501c3 must pay both the amount of FICA tax withheld from employees' wages and the organization's match of that amount. Your 501c3 must pay withheld income taxes together with both the employer and employee portions of FICA taxes electronically using the Electronic Federal Tax Payment System or by sending a check, money order, or cash to an authorized depository. Note that some taxpayers are required to deposit using the Electronic Federal Tax Payment System. See e-file for charities and nonprofits on the IRS website for details. Select the reporting button to move forward. All right, so FICA goes towards Social Security and Medicare. Got it. Charity must withhold and pay the FICA taxes from employees' wages. Got it, but not the in con independent contractor fees. Cool. Do not withhold and pay these taxes if the employee receives less than $100 in a year. Cool. Must pay withhold income taxes and employer employer employee portions of FICA taxes and make payments electronically using the electronic federal tax payment system okay so it sounds like you you could use like a credit card or something or yeah, yeah we would some we, sort of debit card you know to hook up yeah we would have uh, uh, a, like that. an account uh the, the way what we'd set up our bank accounts would be like we would have accounts that pay for things like this and then we'd have like the donations coming in account but like we'd also probably want to consult and like look up the best way to do this but like we'd have it separate in ways where like the thing that pays stuff out and the thing that takes stuff in would be different so that we would transfer between them instead of having like mm -hmm. all of it just being like an in and out account and stuff like that Any questions on this? Nope. I am good myself. So this last one where it's like the charity must pay the withheld income taxes and the employee portions of the FICA taxes. I wish that it was a little bit clearer on how to find that through the W-4. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I know that we have to file it and everything like that. And I think it's going to get to that on the next page. So maybe I'll just also the second that. the second bullet for me. Which is must withhold. And pay FICA taxes from employee wages but not independent contractors. It's like... Ah, it's just because the whole employee thing. So is independent contractors have to do that themselves. Mm, I see. So yeah. they are responsible for doing. Yeah, they they have to do yeah. that with the IRS themselves on their end. Um, however, that's how they're able to write off a lot of those expenses because it's a business fee. Um, for us, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be writing any of those things off because they would be employee wages. I'm just uh, typing some of this up real fast. I was just reading some of it before I did. Must withhold and pay. Pretty much it. Now I know what taxes to withhold. Is that all I have to do? Not quite. Once your 501c3 deposits the federal income and FICA taxes, it must submit returns showing that it withheld and paid them. And remember, just hmm. as the 501c3 An okay. pays federal income and FICA taxes together, it's just like a more it receipt. must report them together on Form W-2, Wage and Tax Statement, and on Form 941. Employer's Quarterly Federal Tax Return. 
How do the employees find out what taxes have been withheld and paid for them when they file their income taxes? Employees should receive a W-2 wage and tax statement. I think I'm going to replay this one. I want to get those written January down. 31 for the preceding calendar year. 501c3s use the W-2 external link to report employee wages and tips paid, income tax withholding, and FICA withholding. The W-2 also reports whether an employee is covered by a pension plan or receives other fringe benefits. Organizations must also send copies of the W-2 for the preceding calendar year to the IRS by the last day of January. To mail your W-2s, send copy A of the W-2 using form W-3, Transmittal of Wages and Tax Statements. A copy of the W-2 must also go to the Social Security Administration. It's important to meet the requirements for the W-2, otherwise penalties may apply. And don't forget to report federal income and FICA taxes on Form 941. Select the Continue button to move forward. It's being very detailed right now. I'm going to replay it's that like, one, actually. It's like saying, hey, you got to have this in before January 31st of every year. Yep. Like, so the reason for that is because taxes are due for people on okay. April 15th. Is there anywhere? And so that's how they're held okay. responsible for the business to get those is, informations taxes to people. Can be a bit confusing. Now I know what taxes Indeed. to withhold. Is that all I have to do? Not quite. Once your 501c3 deposits the just wanna... income and FICA taxes, it must submit return showing that it withheld and paid them. And remember, just as the 501c3 pays federal income and FICA taxes together, it must report them together on Form W-2, Wage and Tax Statement, and on Form 941. Just writing those forms down. Federal tax return. How do the employees find out what taxes have been withheld and paid for them when they file their income taxes? Employees should receive a W-2 wage and tax statement from your organization by January 31 for the preceding calendar year. 501c3s use the W-2 external link to report employee wages and tips paid, income tax withholding, and FICA withholding. The W-2 also reports whether an employee is covered by a pension plan or receives other fringe benefits. Organizations must also send copies of the W-2 for the preceding calendar year to the IRS by the last day of January. To mail your W-2s, send copy A of the W-2 using Form W-3, Transmittal of Wages and Tax Statements. Alrighty. All right, so we got Form W-2 Wage and Statement, Wage and Tax Statement, which I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with, but I, I guess I'll just put these in here. Wages and tips paid, income tax withholding. I, it's right at the bottom here. It's not going to work well. Um. <laughs> Oh, I see. So in um to, I would see. I see that employees have to reserve, receive the five hundred one c three w two by January thirty first. Yeah. So but like you, it you doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be submitted until the following January thirty first year, or the year, the next year of January thirty first. What? See, it says send W-2s for the preceding year to the IRS. But that's the same thing that you're Wait, sending the dub to the employee. You're sending them both out by the 31st. You have to send the form W-2 to your employee and 
mm-hmm. to the IRS. But that W-2 is for the last year. I just think it's funny because it says employees receive a W-2 from the 501c3 by January 31st. But then you have to have it submitted before Jan- – or the deadline is January 31st. So, so if you receive it on the 30th, you have to fill that shit out by the 31st. No, you're mistaken. You're mistaken. Um, From the charity's point of view, you have to send out two W-2s, one to the employee by the 31st and one to the IRS by the 31st. Oh, I see. It's just worded okay. shitty. I feel like it's... So, like, they, the first bullet point under Form W-2 uh, Wage and Tax Statement oh, is talking like it's from the employee's pro- point of view. I have no idea why. We're all talking about from the charity point of view. I, I don't know why it said it. the employee receives a W-2 from the 5 oh. by 30 for, No, you have to send it or give it to them. Now I, I okay I I definitely see what you mean, so. All right, then I just wanted. That could be why I'm throwing you off though right now. Like earlier, some of the shit I'm bringing up, it's like, I feel like I'm trying to look from another perspective, being an employee's perspective. Well, that's good. That's good for to have that and kind so, of difference. And um, but anyway, it's. I think that's good. All right, back on there. Sweet. Okay, so and then we use the form W three to send the W twos to the IRS. We all good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> A copy of the W two must also go to the Social Security Administration. It's important to meet the requirements for the W-2, otherwise penalties may apply. And don't forget to report federal income and FICA taxes on Form 941. Select the Continue button to move forward. Did... There's another no, I... It... You... God What's damn wrong? it! Just listen, you'll hear it. What do you... I'm pissed at them right now. Now I know what taxes to withhold. Is that all? Because I gotta go through all this again. Not quite. Oh, Once so you get one oh, I see. deposits the federal income and FICA taxes, it must submit return showing that it withheld and paid them. And remember, just as the 501c3 pays federal income and FICA taxes together, it must report them together on Form W-2 Wage and Tax Statement and on Form 941. Employer's quarterly federal tax return. How do the employees find out what taxes have been withheld and paid for them when they file their income taxes? Employees should receive a W-2 wage and tax statement from your organization by January 31 for the preceding calendar year. 501c3s use the W-2 external link to report employee wages and tips paid, income tax withholding, and FICA withholding. The W-2 also reports whether an employee is covered by a pension plan or receives other fringe benefits. Organizations must also send copies of the W-2 for the preceding calendar year to the IRS by the last day of January. To mail your W-2s, listen really, really closely now. Send copy A of the W-2 using form W-3, Transmittal of Wages and Tax Statements. A copy of the W-2 must also go to the Social Security Administration. Catch that? Oh, shit. Catch like that? It's different. Catch that? Why, why is this like a different slide? Catch that? That seems like a detail that should be a bullet point. Right? So a copy of the W-2. Yeah, yeah. W-2. I mean, I would definitely say that. I mean, it's... I mean, this is very detailed as far as like... Yeah. Okay, so copy the W-2 also needs to get sent to the Social Security Administration. Got it. I just feel like the slides change every time I hear it. (laughs) It's like different every time I hear the same one. It's fucking weird. I don't like like that there's no bullet point for 
um, the Social Security Administration, and there's no connection to that at all. That's not cool. Three copies. So I mean, is that is that something you fill out in IRS form nine four one? It's not IRS. It's not IRS. I know it's it's well, SSA. So yeah, totally different. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's probably why the slight didn't mention it. They're like, yeah, that's not us. You guys figure it out. Mm. <laughs> All right. I mean, I feel like that should be a little more yeah, out there. I agree. Because, hey, like, most frustrating thing is being told you got to do this. And then you ask, how should I do it? And then you just go, I don't know. <laughs> you know? This shit's frustrating. I or almost they don't want to tell you. I almost feel because... like after doing all of this, I'm gonna go back through and rewrite our notes and then show that for everyone in the group. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well I mean you're taking notes right now, right? Right, right, right. But like rewrite them where someone else could read it and make sense of it. Because I write my notes in a very stupid fucking way. The way I think. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel it's that important way. to meet the requirements for the W-2, otherwise penalties may apply. And don't forget to report federal income and FICA taxes on Form 941. I'm just writing that that bullet point down. Same. <laughs> Nine, four, one. But I'm the only one writing, guys. Ha <laughs> ha. You're the it's only fun. one scribing. <laughs> Sounds so fancy. <laughs> Hell yeah! I got. Right. I wear the robe and everything right now. I'm wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys ready? It's orange and black. Nice. Yep, yep. <laughs> There's another important employee related Oh, yes, this is very important. C3 needs the I9 Employment Eligibility Verification Form. The Federal Immigration and Nationality Act requires all employers to use the form for employees hired after November 6, 1986 to determine their status and verify their work eligibility. The act prohibits employers from knowingly hiring people that aren't authorized to work in the United States. Organizations don't have to send their Form I-9s to the IRS, but they do need <laughs> to keep them on hand. Both the 501 c and the hand. employee must fill out the I-9. So it's like... Yo, that's fucking funny. Yeah, it's like, you're oh responsible God. to show it to us whenever we want to know. Like, it's... It, no, it, I don't see it that way at all. Yeah, so like imagine yeah, like that, imagine right? like um someone that you work uh gets caught smuggling cocaine, right? And they technically are your employee, right? And then like that person yeah. that like they're like when they're like going through like court or some shit, they're like, Nah man, it's the organization's fault. It's not my fault. Like I was like fucking guinea oh. pig, man. And then they come to you and they're like, Hey, where's that form where you said that this person's like legit to work for you? And you're like, Oh no, I don't have it. They're like, Oh, I'm, I'm this is all bullshit. Wait, I don't think any of this is true. <laughs> but, but but why? But no, is so. Hold on, because in my in my business, yeah, it's more about it's more about like, uh, uh um federal taxes. But yeah, good. Well, I'm just thinking about like the meatpacking industry. Mm -hmm. They people get fucking deported from that shit all the time. But the business is not held liable. Now, of course, this is a business. This is not in 501c3. Or actually, I don't really know if it is, technically. But, right. Uh, I, I totally... I think that's just something that should be included whenever anyone's hired. Like, you should just go... Like, assume to go through that process. So then, if they do ask for it, which I think it's so funny that they could say... Hey, you got like even as the business itself has to keep it on hand, but they're not required to show it, which is funny. They're not required to send it, but they are required yeah, to show it if it's requested. They're required to, to file it, but not 
No, no, no. They're not. Re- no, no. They're like by file that you mean just record the ca- re- like keep it on record, right? Within the business, it's within the organization. Oh, okay, because yeah, you don't have to file it with the actual federal IRS. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Okay. All right. No, I got that, which I think that's funny. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> but on the other end of that, if you're being per se the government, mm-hmm. I feel like I should just require that straight up. Yes, I agree. Yeah. That yeah. that that that's all I'm saying because then there's no question. I think the more and more that, we that learn stolen gun is mine. About yeah. how our government that works. I already. The more we're gonna realize that it's just kind of a layered system of loopholes. Because like well, this could course. this well, could all yeah. be done so clear cut and dry. I so just, clear cut. I mean, I'm, I mean I, I'm no lawyer, so I wouldn't trust what I'm saying. I wouldn't trust but, what a lawyer's saying either. <laughs> <laughs> but a professional time, liar. Yeah. Come on. I wouldn't say that. That is a professional a liar. Digests the wording. A judge does. To their a, own words. A, a judge is the one which that's words gonna... could be created. All words are created. Oh come on, this is getting philosophical. We'll do that later. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep going on now. Five hundred one three must keep it for three years after the date of hire, or one year after the date employment ends, whichever is later. Now that's clear, at least. Hey, finally, something is clear. <laughs> right? I love numbers. Fucking IRS, you should love number two. I wonder how they're doing. I wonder what it's like working for the IRS right now. Terrible. <laughs> they don't have enough they don't have enough funds to actually operate. Yeah. They are oh, they are stripped sucks. of any efficiency because of that. And it's done on purpose. Anyways. <laughs> Don't get philosophical bash. Mm, that's political. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Need that either. Right now. Political can be philopol. How do you do philosophy and politics? It digests in philosophy. It takes an idea and it twists it. But anyways, I'm not getting philosophical. God damn it. We're gonna get polysophical. <laughs> each of the taxes the is required to pay for its employees. You may choose one answer, then select the question. This bitch, this bitch, ah, this bitch. (laughs) There's that word monetary. This bitch. It's literally because we got it wrong. But hey, this is the one that it. So no federal tax. Watch, watch, they're like, no, you you don't need to because it's going to be on the other ones. (laughs) Fuck you. So do we put C? I'm just reading through the question. Oh. Select each of the following I taxes that, that a 501c3 yeah. is required to withhold and pay it for its employers. You may choose more than one answer. If a. Federal tax income. B. Federal insurance contributions act tax. C. Tax for gifts with a monetary value. D. <laughs> federal unemployment tax act tax. We're definitely clicking C. <laughs> yep. We all good? I... I can you get ha! Ha! unemployed ha! people? Yes, oh. that was an earlier question. Yes, you can. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're volunteers. You can give them specific things, but if you give them a concert ticket, that costs too much. Yep. Yep. Man, this. Is... <laughs> Here's another example. All right. I know someone who <laughs> just <laughs> the following statements that are false oh, regarding shit. withholding and paying FICA taxes. Knowledge check. You may choose more than one answer. Select each of the following statements that are false regarding withholding and paying FICA taxes. You may choose more than one answer. So these are things that are wrong. A. FICA taxes are voluntary. That is wrong. B. 501c3 (laughs) must withhold and pay FICA taxes from employees' wages, but not independent contractor fees. That is correct. Yeah, that's true. C. 501c3 doesn't withhold and pay taxes for employees receiving less than $100 during the year. That's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. 501c3 must pay withheld income taxes and the employer and employee portions of FICA taxes. That is true. Mm -hmm. Some organizations must make payments electronically using the electronic federal tax payment system. That is also true. Oh, that's some in there. It did say that. It did say okay. that earlier. It, yeah, so a couple of slides ago, it didn't say everyone. It said some organizations, 
organizations will be required. Oh, uh, okay. And then it had that like acronym of the EFTPS, whatever. Yeah. Doesn't that, doesn't that, uh, shit, doesn't that, uh, determine, but isn't that determined by based on what, like what you're doing in your organization? It didn't say. Mm. It did not have a specification of what would be or what wouldn't be. I'm assuming, I'm assuming there's like a date and time that if you're formed after that, then you probably have to, so that they're moving towards like a non paper system. Legal eagle. <laughs> all right, I'm oh, I'm right, submitting. So, we we good on this? Or, yeah. All right. Oh, we're good with just this. Yeah, because oh. that's the only one that was wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. The other three were like, yep. Painted it is not an option. <laughs> Which of the following statements correctly describes how the W two must be handled? Select each of the following statements that correctly describe how the W two must be handled. You may choose more than one answer. The W two must be sent to the employee by January thirty first for the preceding calendar year. The W two is sent to the employee only. The Social Security Administration must receive a copy of the W two. The W two must be transmitted to the IRS using Form W three. Boop, boop. That's my answers. What do you think? A, C, D. Yeah, I'm glad you yeah. remembered about C. Yeah, that was that yeah, was. I got I got angry about that. There, but doesn't. I got angry it, about you know? that. They didn't even like, fucking put that on there. Question. Fucking put it on there. I could easily just put it on there. Just, mm, submit. That one's been branded into my brain. Yeah. Just because they didn't mention it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they did it on no, purpose. All because of you bashed. Yeah. They reverse psychology to us. Taxes on the wages. The taxes <laughs> when, I wouldn't say that. Federal income tax. <laughs> I know. Federal insurance contribution They're just lazy. It's just lazy. It's terrible. Social Security and Medicare. We're all lazy, man. I mentioned that 501c3s are I don't take good notes. from paying <laughs> federal unemployment accounts or FUDA. And that they don't need to withhold income tax for statutory employees or employees earning. I'll read through this once he's done reading it. During the year, we also talked about reporting federal taxes and how 501c3s must disclose the federal and FICA taxes withheld and paid by issuing a W-2 wage and tax statement to the employee by January 31st for the preceding calendar year. The 501c3 must also send copies of the W-2 to the IRS. For the preceding calendar year. One other important employee related form the 501c3 needs is Form I 9, Employment Eligibility Verification Form. The law prohibits employers from knowingly hiring or employing persons not authorized to work in the United States. 501c3s don't have to send Form I 9s to the IRS, but do need to keep them on hand. Yep, you said that earlier, so. All right, so just to read through this I real fast. Love how it, I love how it like repeats itself basically under the 501c3 right. wage tax statement. It does, it does. And <laughs> instead it kind of just repeats itself for both ends. It's just, almost all of this, yeah. So, yeah, we got to pay wages to employees must, or we, charities that pay wages to employees must withhold and pay federal employment taxes. That's income tax and FICA tax. FUDA isn't required. We do not withhold taxes for statutory employees and employees receiving less than $100 a year. We must issue a W-2 wage statement for the preceding year by the 31st, the IRS and the employee. It did not say a date for the SSA, but I'm assuming it's the same. Yeah, I'm going to assume the same. And then you also need to have a Form I-9 eligibility verification on file for three years and then a year after they're fired or quit. Um, statutory employees. I have I have two things that on my notes. One is statutory workers, and one is statutory employees. The statutory workers was the board of directors and an officers. Now that makes sense, but what about the officers? Huh. Before we, uh, just before we move on, because there there was a separate thing where it specifically called out what the definition of a statutory employee is, and those were the full time salesperson, full time life insurance agent, agent driver for food, beverage, or laundry, 
or the home worker performing uh, work on materials furnished by the employee employer. Same thing. No, not opposite. But um, I just want to be sure on that one. Do you mind if I cap back on that? Um, go for it. Sorry, sorry for being. I just, I just really want to be thorough on it. I know we're doing a lot of this over and over and over. Some of these taxes can be a bit confusing. And this what was we're looking for. Bracket taxes go towards social security. Statutory employee. Your employee's wages, with one exception, if you pay in any calendar year, then no FICA tax. So that just mutes it. Oh, two times speed. And the organization. Two times speed. Come on, two times speed. Seems it just is it playing sound for you? No, it's going two times yeah, speed, so it's like not talking. It's just like talking to itself. Oh, I wish it did like the little hamster voice. <laughs> exactly. It's very original. Shit. <laughs> Come on. Out of just the dead, the end, shit. <laughs> uh, come on. Get to the. Did I miss it? Did I already go past it? I already think I think I already went past it. Fuck. I did. Damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was in. That was probably back, back in like 14, 15 ish. Oh, geez. I was on the wrong page. Yeah. I was on the wrong page of my notes. So that was. God, where is it? Oh, it was statutory. The there it is. Okay. Statutory. Yeah. Statutory work. Mm, shit. So, yeah, like 15. I'll check there. Look at this. So, again, classifying a worker as employee or independent contractor is a simple matter of. Now I understand how to classify my workers. See, see, this is the this is the thing. These are statutory workers, and these are the board of directors and stuff, right? And the officers, and then we go. Workers categorized as independent contractors. Considered. Yeah, it should be like. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. These are these are all. <laughs> These are just examples. No, 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 no. They're also, they, so this is including the officers. So you don't withhold. So a statutory employee is a statutory work. Okay. So why would we not withhold taxes for statutory employees? You would not withhold what? taxes? Yeah, it says this later on. It says... Here, I'll, we'll, we'll go to it. We are past there. Is it this one or is it the next one? The W-2 also reports whether an employee is covered by a pension plan or receives other fringe benefits. Organizations must also send copies of the W-2 for the preceding calendar year to the IRS by the last day of January. To mail your W-2s, send copy A of the W-2 using form W-3, Transmittal of Wages and Tax Statements. A copy of the W-2 must also go to the Social Security Administration. It's important to meet the requirements for the W-2, otherwise penalties may apply. And don't forget to report federal income and FICA taxes on Form 941. Select the Continue button. From There's another important employee-related form your 501c3 needs. So, the I-9. Keep going. Eligibility We've already done this. You cool if I skip this one? The Federal yeah. Immigration and Nationality Act requires... Yeah, yeah. Look at this example. Here's another example. Which of the following... 
Let's review. This is what it was. We know that 501c3s that pay employees must withhold and pay federal employment taxes on the wages. The taxes include Federal Income Tax and Federal Insurance Contributions Act, or FICA taxes, which pay into Social Security and Medicare. I mentioned that 501c3s are exempt from paying federal unemployment tax, or FUTA, and that they don't need to withhold income tax for statutory employees or employees earning less than $100 during the year. We also talked about reporting federal taxes and how 501c3s must disclose the federal and FICA taxes withheld and paid by issuing a W-2 wage and tax statement to the employee by January 31st for the preceding calendar year. The 501c3 must also send copies of the W-2 to the IRS for the preceding calendar year. One other important employee-related form the 501c3 needs is Form I-9, Employment Eligibility Verification Form. The law prohibits employers from knowingly hiring or employing persons not authorized to work in the United States. See that, see that line where it says, in the very middle, but do need to keep them on hand. 501c3e, or 501c3 does not withhold and pay taxes for statutory employees. So they don't for the officers or or the... So like, here's the thing. Board of directors can't be employees. That makes sense. But officers can be employees. Wait, but I thought... They would be statutory... Board of directors can be considered employees. No, 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 no. No. So board of directors must be a volunteer or independent contractor. The officers can be paid or not paid. That hmm. is the main, that or if they're performing limited or no service. But so the board of directors cannot be an employee, but an officer can be an employee and that would be a statutory worker or a statutory employee. But Why would we not withhold or pay taxes for them? Yeah, that. Is it because they're exempt? Like, why is that so confusing? I say that. Um, I feel like board of directors, if you're being paid either by salary or through contributions like concert tickets, um, you 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 could be considered, and in, in even by the IRS can classify you as an employee at the same time you're not an employee because you're part of the board of directors which is really weird no 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 uh, no no I, no I you're your for like two seconds i'm sorry do your thing do your thing but um all right so i have a question yes is an employee different from a statutory employee yes Are those two different things yes okay okay i want to make sure i so like that concept down so like for instance for instance Let's say we have someone that's paid. Uh, this doesn't exist for us, but let's say we have an office where we have like uh, people can come in and they can like interact with our organization, and we have someone that, that sits at a desk, um, forty hours a week, right? Yeah, that would be an employee. All right. Well, are they being paid like a salary? Well, well yes. In a, in our in our in our situation, even by definition, they would be an employee just because they'd have to show up and be at our physical location for forty hours a week. That 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 would now make them classified classified as an employee from what we just learned um we would also be we we should pay them but if they uh, volunteered their time then that would be a different situation however the fact that they're required to be there at a specific time and it's specific stuff that's when we start still having to apply them as an employee um but if we pay them or not is the big difference there on that one um but what i'm basically trying to get to is the 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 president the vice president the treasurer not the people sitting there at the uh like being paid for like an exchange thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're we don't withhold their taxes. Why did it not cover this clearly clear and because it, it talks a shit ton about what? statutory employees and about accountable plans and non accountable plans. Yeah. But it does not ever say a 501c3 does not withhold and pay taxes for statutory employees. I did not hear that at any time.
And I'm looking back through my so my notes you, right now. So if you are a statutory employee, you don't withhold and pay taxes. Don't, you don't pay taxes on them. But what about the employee themselves? Are they being taxed? <sighs> yeah. Or are they exempt? Well, I mean, no, no, or no, no. Whatever they're doing, you know, like if you're the salesperson traveling, like when you. Like if the so if the, it actually specifically said salesperson is one of the people who fall under statutory employees. Okay. So I'm actually, okay. looking up the there's an article on the IRS site. <clears throat> I can post it. In the, yeah, can you link in it in the chat? Yeah, 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 link it. It actually doesn't. Give I, I, you I, much I know I keep more, sticking to the sales uh, information. It, just, it doesn't give you just more. What I can relate to. It doesn't give you much more. It pretty much sums up that same. Those same four bullet points about the um, the four examples of the, the life insurance agent, the agent driver gives those again, and yeah, for an exempt organization, the most common employees in this category are its officers. Officers, yeah. So officers, and then anyone that like is those other things. What other things? Oh, here we go. Okay, perfect. Okay. At the very bottom of that thing that you uh, were just talking about, the exemptions, who's a statutory employee, we're looking at the IRS website right now. It says, an employer should indicate on the workers' form W-2 whether the worker, other than a corporate officer, is classified as a statutory employee. Non-officer statutory employees report their wages, income, and allowable expenses on Schedule C, Form 1040. That's their personal. They are not liable for self-employment tax because their employers must treat them as employees for Social Security taxes. So the employee is taxed, whether you're an officer. No, no. We don't. Or, or, or whether you're considered a statutory employee. Because you're still being taxed Social Security, and that's the federal thing. The defining line is this corporate officer thing. Some workers that's are. Why being a bartender can be so confusing? <laughs> mm -mm. Do you know what I'm saying, Kisabai? You gotta deal with all these. Seemingly drunk assholes. Some workers I are deemed that. to be employees by statute. I mean, yeah, Dude, for an example, I feel like, most common I feel like everyone <laughs> has their day. You know, we, we all have our days. The IRS is making me have a day right now. <laughs> I want to be really specific on this. Hmm. I'm just reading through this a little bit real quick. Sorry for the delay. You're good, dude. I feel like I've been holding this up a ton today. Hey, God, make sure you understand everything. It's all good. We're all learning together. I just wish that like, there were uh, they were a little bit more forward with these details. It's just sometimes I'm, I feel like it's like, it's like you're going through a questionnaire, and you gotta like, if you get it wrong, you can pay, you, you can be punished for that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and and though i understand what they're trying to do i understand like the the intent but yeah it's the i mean th this legal eagle is the irs this is him trying to break it down into words correct yeah okay 
Is this a is this an outside thing or is this the IRS? No, well, this is the IRS. I can understand it's a hard thing to fucking word, but goddamn, <laughs> there are some there are some details that need to be hashed out, <laughs> like a lot of things. But, but I think I think I'm gonna have yes. I'm gonna have to read uh, this publication 15 um, to really 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 figure it out. Oh, you're uh, gonna have to get into the nitty gritty. I mean, you don't have to do that right now. Or shit, actually, wait, oh. Yeah, no, I don't have to do it right now. Um, um, I do have to go here in a minute, so I'll do like a couple more slides and then. Yeah, we'll just move through that then. Um, well, actually, here. So we're we're actually gonna go on to the last section, which is recognize the major employment tax forms and their uses. Um, so we can just burn oh, through God. this real quick. Um, progress check. We already familiar with. I I I am gonna uh put a note in here for myself to research this. Yeah, I should probably do the same. And that form I nine is required and must be retained by five hundred one c three. you guys are better than me about it. Select the continue button. I have not been getting into nitty gritty uh, I'm just really curious and it's kind of like eating at me <laughs> a couple of things with that last bit I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna um, look up a couple like other people's digestion versions of it on YouTube and shit like that and then I'm gonna look up the actual definitions in the uh, publications itself just to try and get a better idea on it because that that seems like they're telling us to do all this shit, and at the very end, they're like, okay, now, don't do that. Yeah. The fuck? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting a little worked up on I, this. I don't, I don't feel like okay. there's anything we don't have to do, but there are things that we... It literally said, do not with... No, nope. track. It says it say. does not withhold for statutory employees, and that... It, what? And it said it in bold, too, or in all caps. Yeah, it seemed like they wanted us to know about that which is the opposite of everything so like i mean it makes sense that we report all or we will withhold all of this for employees of like people like that and then like the the people that do like the work of like the actual organization we don't that makes sense as a charity nonprofit, right like that makes that makes sense but i want to i want to see it clear anyways kevy said yes go so let's go a little faster we have 13 more slides to go through, I believe. So what do I do about independent contractors? The important thing to remember is that 501c3s need to report payments made to independent contractors, but they don't normally need to withhold or pay their federal employment taxes. I said normally because there are two important exceptions, and both involve independent contractor identification. First, ah, the what's that noise? Contractor doesn't provide a social security <laughs> I have or no clue. identification number, or provides one that is obviously incorrect, like one with the wrong number of Might digits. Be a truck driving by. The organization <laughs> should withhold tax. This is called backup withholding, and it protects your organization if your independent contractors don't report their earnings to the IRS. The second exception applies when the IRS notifies your organization that the identification numbers provided by the independent contractor are incorrect. In both cases, your 501c3 should send a notice to the independent contractor asking for a corrected number, and it should back up withhold on future payments until the issue is resolved. Select the continue button to move forward. Jarno Public. I just love how it says employer and not organization, or I love how it says employer. <laughs> you can tell where some of this stuff is just being pulled from whatever they've written up for uh, corporations and where it's specific to charities. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I could not tell. <laughs> I really could. I was just saying, I just... I, well, that was one of the examples. <laughs> 
backup withholding that? How much do I have to back up withhold? And how do I get that money? Does anyone else hear that double? Yeah. Yep. It did it for the slide specific. To the IRS. If your organization fails to get an independent contractor's <laughs> identifying information, what happened? The backup withholding. You don't hear that? Oh, oh I, I hear that. Organization should file what the? It sounds like the they have Kevin problems. Requirements for depositing your tax to the IRS and report the withheld amount on form 1099. All right, I'm actually emailing them on that one. We'll talk about more in a minute. I mean, you also know that if your wait, if you two times, and we don't have to hear the voice. Oh, good call, bro. Good call. I got it, man. I fucking got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So backup withholding an incorrect employee classification. Oh, Black percent is important. Sorry, go ahead. Backup withholding. If independent contractor SSI or ENI is in missing incorrect, withhold 20% of reportable payments. Fell form 948 annual return or if withheld federal income tax and follow standard deposit requirements. Use 1099 miscellaneous miscellaneous income to report independent contractor withholding and payments if incorrectly classified as an independent contractor with no reasonable bias or basis. 501c3 may be held responsible for employment taxes. Man, Fun. So if this bitch doesn't report his own fucking shit, we can be held responsible. Boom. We're going to be very, very cautious about who we do business with. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and I think that should that should not uh, problem with me, man. What? I what? Go out. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not. No, go ahead. Go that. ahead. I'm typing up a note. So go I ahead. Don't, I don't want to get into that. I don't. Ah, uh, don't then. Don't. Yeah. See, this is why. Anyways, I need to stop talking sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so. But I do, it is important for the independent contractors is if it's missing incorrect, you got to automatically hold 28%. So that's for probably the taxes mm -hmm. that they would take. I didn't know that it's, it's 28% for the organization. So like this is stuff that like, if we got into a situation like this, we would actually most likely hire a accountant to make sure we go through it correctly. It's funny because yeah, there's someone who is an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and here, there you go. So that's a funny thing is, how would we choose them? Well, we would solicit them and multiple other people see who the best cost is. We wouldn't just pick them because then we get into a problem where we're not being a charitable yep. foundation. Oh, true. Well, that and you want to be careful who you're doing business with. Yeah, well, that was like one of the contract. one of the very first things that it warned about is like crossing uh, ownership and payments of stuff between yeah, things. Yeah, remember like that. the the cute and cuddly. Exactly. The cute and cuddly uh, charitable whatever you call it. Mm hmm. Let's see if this is going all right. I still kind of want to do times two speed though. Any other form of compensation? No, it's not doing Generally, anymore. your organization has to report payments to independent <laughs> contractors. Slide 34 was are if the contractor up. is a corporation or if you pay the independent contractor less than $600 during the calendar year. This exception doesn't apply to medical and attorney payments even if the recipient is a corporation. Also remember that the IRS requires 501c3s to report payments made to health care providers and attorneys regardless of their corporate status. Select the continue button to move forward. I kind of wonder how they got to the 600 number. Why 600? Is it 500 enough? Why not 1,000? Hmm. That is Andrew interesting. Yang, give me that fucking $1,000 a month. How do I find out if the <laughs> independent contractor is Fuck a corporation? Yeah. Wales is testing that Simply right now. The independent contractor complete form for real? Of yep. Really? Request for Check it out in uh, the current news channel. I posted it for clerky. He or she will indicate his
his or her business what if he's doing it? <laughs> sole proprietor corporation i think it's a little younger than him as well as his or her wow. security number or it's like a certain group of people age 18 are going to get it for i think 2 years business status and the identification Lucky. numbers must appear on the 1099 miscellaneous and keep in mind that if the independent contractor is a sole proprietor the social security number is preferred over an employer identification number. Your 501c3 should keep completed W-9s in its records, but doesn't need to send them to the IRS. Is the, so the W-9s is not I-9s, correct? <laughs> no. Okay. So it's like the same type of idea. It needs to be recorded, but not required to be filed. So I'm like... Sure gotta... This you gotta keep it within a certain amount of years too. The W nine indicates who they are to us, so that when oh, yeah. we so file say, our taxes, we use that form to determine how we file our taxes. With how we interacted with them, I I'm, I do not I do not follow you there. What's your question? I mean, uh, the, just the whole thing. Like, you f it's a form you fill out. Not, no, no, no. So the, the, the W-9 is something that, um, like, let's say we hire a, a plumber to fix our uh, hypothetical office, right? Mm -hmm. So that contractor, whoever we hire, that plumber, mm -hmm. like, and let's say it's for, like, our organization's um office whatever right so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they will have a w9 filled out either something that we can pull or something that they submit to us and on that form they will indicate how their business is structured because what the w9 basically says is is this going to a business or is this going to an individual the ein is a business the uh. ssn is an individual and it's the determining uh, file, if you will, or form that's used to determine how the taxes to that individual or entity are responsible, like from us. Oh, I see. Got so, it. Depends on how they... Yes, it's on their end. How they, how they classify themselves to right, us. Right, right. Like, for instance, let's say it's that plumber is a dude... That just has his own truck working, and his own working, tools working, and it's all, out of his, yeah, it's all it, working out of his garage. Right, right, right. So that would be like a 1099. That'd be an independent contractor. But let, let's say it, uh, that it's a, a roto router. It's a fucking corporation, right? Mm -hmm. And we're not like paying them as an independent contractor, right? We're just, that, that, we wouldn't do it with, we would not do all of this shit with them because they're not an individual. Does that make sense? So uh, you lost me at the last part there. Uh, yeah. So the corporation. It's 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 because a corporation can be an individual. Um. So like that's where. Yeah. This gets a little confusing. Well, um. But like for instance, can do business with itself. That that's relevant. What I'm saying is, um. Yeah, what I'm, what what I'm trying to get to is. Independent contractors are treated different than corporations in how we have to interact with them. I if we hire a a corporate. Um, per, like uh, like a corporate plumber to send someone to come fix our shit. We pay them for their service, right? And then that would be taxed as a sales tax and that kind of thing. But if we hire someone to do a job like for our oh, our our things, like, like a maintenance guy. No, yeah. not even like like like. Let's say let's say we hire an independent. This make this might make more sense. Let's uh, say we hire an uh, independent contractor to be our security at our office, mm -hmm. right? So then they are not an employee. We're not employing them. But it's like that fine line between like you're, we're paying them a flat fee. They they don't have like like You're you're paying them for the services. Right, 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 right. But they're yeah. they're their their own identity, like like, like, like their yes. own thing, like say a security company or whatever. Own, they, for example, they have their own organization. Right. So how one C three. How okay, how so we hire Go ahead. The security could be some 
homeless dude we picked off the street to do security or we yes. could have brinks or whatever right and and how we report that shit depends on whether or not that is a corporation or it's a for-profit uh, sole proprietor or if it's an independent contractor on a 1099 um like so that's basically what this is saying that that w9 form is telling us what they are but we don't have to do that for something that already is uh, like a, a substantial corporation that is already. What if that individual works that you are paying for their services? Mm -hmm. What if they are an independent contractor of a corporation? Shit. I should not be asking this goddamn question. Wait, so isn't that just dealing with the corporation then? Yeah. Um, it just depends on how we contracted them. Did we contract them as an individual? For their individual service or did we contract their business oh i see yeah you know so like that's that's the, that's a good way to look at this is like are we are we talking about a person a something a person owns or like something that's like an established group thing <laughs> yo i know a couple small like security contractors right shit but yeah so I'm, i mean these are just examples okay but like we yeah, don't no, we don't no, we no, don't have to do this uh this uh uh shit for uh things that are not an independent contractor you know like things that we're just like hiring for like a thing um like one off to one off what so uh like shit. for instance um hiring a bartender well that would be an ongoing that'd be an employee I was say like having Having cater, someone cater to, let's say, there's a pub crawler meetup. Yes, yeah, yes, and, yes, and yes. And great example. Comes in and caters, you know, serving alcohol for mm -hmm. the evening. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's the example I'm thinking of. Yeah. So, like, for instance, if we did that, and let's say that we like got it from, um, I don't know what a popular uh, fucking restaurant is. Uh, like, let's say we did Cheesecake Factory or some shit, right? Like, that would be different than if we hired someone that has. Uh, their own catering company that mm -hmm. we just happen to know or something like that, right? So, like, with them, we would be, I believe, requ not. it's not saying that, it actually didn't even say that we're required, required to do this. It's just if they don't do their end, then we need to show, oh, like... Oh, yeah, this is still with all that back withholding or yes back yes withholding. so this is this is all yeah, within the mindset right. this is all under the, the the umbrella thing that this is only to cover our ass if the people we hire don't do their taxes right it's to show that we need to keep record that we sh we paid this person this amount and what it's saying is 28 uh, percent of the that that uh taxable payment should be held on to in case they don't pay their taxes. Which uh, is kind of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can... Oh, God. Go ahead. Oh, God. Mm. Go ahead. I think it's going to stir things up more, man. We got... Yeah, like, he's like, over there struggling with his questions like, I, I can't unleash this power. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I would it. say that. It's just... Unleash the Kraken. Dude, Kevin's about to cause anarchy here. Do it. No, it's just... But at the same time, from my understanding, that... Independent contractors pay, right? Their flat fee. They get not, paid by us, yes. Yes. So for their, well, we pay them for their service. Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> The money you pay them does not is not required to be taxed, like to be federally taxed. But if so, they fuck up their taxes. We have to make sure you withhold 28% of that flat fee to pay for the taxes to the IRS for Social Security. Which makes no sense to me personally. That's what I'm getting. 
Yeah, that's what I'm and getting. I don't too. Know yeah. if that's no, that no, that's exactly what I'm confusing. getting. It, no, it's exactly what I'm getting, and it just kind of pisses me off a little bit that we could be held, re- uh, uh, we could be held liable as an independent, independent contractor uh, for a wage for someone that has and signified that they are in, in, like. But it does un, it does make sense in the sense where we're. If they don't represent themselves to the IRS as independent contractor, it would basically fall back onto whoever paid them. And that would be us. And so I, I do see that. But it's a little it's a little shitty in my opinion. Um but it's more I mean, you gotta be uh, problem with me is the way I look at it. Someone's gotta be responsible for it. I'll put it this way. And it can't, you can't make like you can't be the one writing the rules but then not required of yourself you know it's like monkey see monkey do like don't do it yeah i mean i agree with you on that i agree with you on that but at some point the 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 government's gonna get its money from someone so they're gonna hold whoever had the money responsible um the way i'm looking at it is if we have an account a bank account that's separate that's like this is the account that goes for uh, of course all right but like look hear me out all the way so if we had an account that was separate for paying for anything, right, for like ongoing payments or whatever, that account, like let's say it's X amount, anytime we take X amount, oh, shit. like what about like a monthly payment? No, just, just, just hear me, hear it all the way out. Okay. So yeah. anytime we like make a payment to something for like an independent contractor, it's almost as if we have to take whatever their charges and then add thirty percent to it and just hold on to that thirty <laughs> percent. Yeah. No, and we can two percent. We can we can automate that. Where like if we make a payment with this account, plus thirty percent goes into this other holding account, and then that way we could have a separate holding account throughout the whole year. Where it's like if some shit goes wrong, we can tell the IRS specifically. Here's where that money exists. Here's how much it is, and here's why it's there. So it's honestly pretty easy to do. It's just a little bullshit that we have to, in my opinion. You pretty much have to add an extra thirty yeah. percent to any any expense independent contractor yep. Yep. dealings. And yep. and I mean I mean that, that I mean you could even have a you could technically have a contractor I feel like that dishes out concert tickets. Yep. Hmm? Yeah. So fucking concert. just fucking Tammy. Fuck, God damn it! God damn it! <laughs> I don't go to many concerts and I went to one last month and like so that's why I'm so heated about the cost of concert tickets and like that's that's why I wanted to say yes on that one but I actually didn't think it was a no I actually thought it was a no and then it was a yes and I was like ah <laughs> concert tickets <laughs> anyways um you guys cool if we go forward I, th- I think we kind of yes, 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 yep yeah, alright cool I think we got that I think that was a good that was a good workout though that was a good dude I don't know anyways there's a lot I'm going of too far into shit nah I'm going too far out Nah, 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 because then we'll cover the full spectrum. 1099 miscellaneous to report backup withholding for independent contractors. Your organization must use the same form to report payments made to its independent contractors. These payments will be reported as non-employee compensation. You are required to send the form to your independent contractor and the IRS. You must send a copy for all payments made in the previous calendar year to your independent contractors by January 31st and file a copy with the IRS. Use Form 1096, Annual Summary and Transmittal of U.S. Information Returns to deliver your 1099s to the IRS. Failure to comply with the requirements for Form 1099 Miscellaneous will result in penalties. For more information on the 1099 Miscellaneous, See the instructions for Form 1099 Miscellaneous and Publication 1220, Specifications for Electronic Filing of Forms. Select the Continue button to move forward. Alright, hold on one second. Yep, you're good. I love how it's like, you don't have the form in front of you, but it's saying, (laughs) file a copy. If you are reporting payments in box seven, see form instructions for additional de- deadlines. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. Honestly, I hate how much this works so well for my brain. This is the kind of shit I love. Where when it's like vague, I can't handle it, man. 
but it is fake. No, it's not. It's ex- ex- you know exactly where to look for. You know exactly what forms to it, do it, it does, on, and it does like specify it. It does specify, but at the same time, it's like. But here, like for instance, and then it'll say will result in penalties. What penalties? How much? When? Where? Why? How? That's tell that's me everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I go into the detail once, man. <laughs> <laughs> Because I like do this shit when I'm reading those ones, but they have answers. Uh, let me know when your guys are good. Go on the next one. I think, I think it is kind of interesting that if we pay someone under $600 for a service or fee or something like that, like we don't have to file. Cool. That's like, that's like what a forty-hour week job makes. It gives a lot of incentive to undercharge. Honestly, right, it good. gives a lot of incentive to undercharge, and then just do everything cash. Wow, that's fucked up. Yeah, I shouldn't talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm not talking about like us. I'm saying like, if you wanted to game the system, Jesus Christ. <laughs> It would be very hard. It would be very hard if you wanted to. You mentioned penalties yep. for not complying with Form 1099 miscellaneous requirements. What are those? Failure to file a correct Form 1099 miscellaneous with the IRS by the due date without reasonable cause can result in a penalty of $100 per document. This applies if your organization fails to file. They gave me what I wanted! It's to include all the information required on the form or provides incorrect information on the form. The same penalty applies for failing to furnish your independent contractors with a 1099. This is per form, per so document. To both file and furnish one 1099 miscellaneous will result in a penalty of $200 per form. The maximum penalty is $1,500,000 per year, or $500,000 per year for organizations with less than $5 million in gross receipts. Holy if failure shit. is found to be deliberate, there is no limit on the penalty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hold on a second. I need to write this down. Okay. So this is this is being if, so vaguely like No, there, there's no vague here. Being vaguely detailed here. That's not No, I hate you for No, no. Okay, so they were vague on that last form, uh or on that last page where it said that they, if you fuck up there could be penalties, but this is explicit. I mean, it's telling you what the penalties are. Yeah, it's telling you what they are, but it's just like, I guess it depends on what state you're in. It does. <laughs> it really does. I keep putting the present sign instead of the dollar sign. <laughs> they are around here no this is big deal stuff yes 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 you're messing about no penalty limit they're just slam the book like i was just saying if you wanted to game the system but you were doing big numbers boom they can take you down so this kind of covers somebody's got to have that power well yeah it just hopefully you don't fall under the Eyeball of Iris Iron. I have saw run. Just do it right. That's all that matters. But to do that, you must have employees. Oh, fuck. Okay, this is gonna be my my last slide. Let me write. Let me just finish my notes here. And then I I'm gonna hop off. Alrighty. All right, we have uh, eight more to go, but you're good, bro. I appreciate your input and thank you very yeah. much for being here for so long. <laughs> I mean, it got a little in depth today, it did, and we've been going on for a while. Yeah, I, no. I feel like uh, we got some good questions though. It's going back and forth, and it's it's just my brain. I like how I'm like getting more understanding. To be honest, <laughs> like it's not like we're going down this hole, and I'm like getting lost more and more. So I hope that's is is that what you're saying is happening? Are you talking to me? Yes. Oh, 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 shit. Uh, I'm just saying that. Uh, I'm playing a bit of devil, devil's advocate here. Ah. 
which is good, which is good, which is good. You know, looking at it from both perspectives, but of course there's things here and there that are like, what the fuck? Like there's what? a lot of what the fuck. <laughs> there, there's been a lot of what, there's, yes, there's been a lot of those right now. Like, but it's good on. though, I, it, it, it helps me learn at least the what the fucks, especially when you bring up the what the fucks. <laughs> Let me look into them. Ah, oh. knowledge. Give me the power. All right, cool. Well, next one on. Here's an example of good. how right, organization guys. could. All right, take it easy, though. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a good one, Kevy. See ya. Bye, Kevy. Oh god damn it, Kevy. Ah He needs to <laughs> he needs to keep his uh Zencaster up until we're done. Oh no. And he just left. Let me just message him real quick. Yay! Alright, hopefully he does. If not, whatever. You got a bit time? Um, it still shows oh my god it's still recording whatever he's doing on his end oh that's hilarious it's open mic <laughs> like i can see him talking and shit i, I see i see the ripples <laughs> all right let's finish up these last few slides here <laughs> yes. independent contractors taxes let's say that your 501c3 mistakenly believed an independent contractor was a corporation and your organization didn't report his earnings on a 1099 miscellaneous and the 1099 miscellaneous and W-9 were never given to the independent contractor. If you later find out that the independent contractor was incorrectly classified and your organization had a reporting requirement, your organization might be required to pay the backup withholding taxes because it never received the independent So never hire independent contractor. Got it. Apparently. <laughs> the penalties I just mentioned may apply too. I guess you you like the guy at his desk. Sure independent right. contractor completes and returns a W-9 to my organization before starting work and receiving any pay. That's the best insurance. Select the continue button to move forward. Yeah. Get all your forms before they even start, before you even start thinking about money. Get the forms. You know where I think this could get really, really fucked up is if people is people not uh, doing the board of directors, right? Mm -hmm. Board of directors. Because they, ha if they're paid, they have to be independent contractors. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Does that? Oh. Then they have to do all this W nine and yep whatnot. Yep, yep. I see. Yeah, because like technically, someone could form a corporation. That corporation could then be hired as a independent con. Wait, no corporations aren't. So like you could form a sole proprietorship, and then that sole proprietorship could be hired on. As an independent as contractor? Like a board member? Oh my god, dude, this is so sketch. No, Ew. no, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. Ew. Can we not do that? Oh no, of course not. Of course not. I'm just like trying. That sounds, yeah. that sounds like some, uh, some muddy water. I don't want to. That sounds like I would the Coca. Sounds like the Coca Cola Corporation and Chick Fil A. <laughs> it sounds like maintaining proper documentation is important. That's right, Bobby. It's very important to keep. All right, we're taking a picture of this guy. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say I'm just snipping that one. Is withheld and paid for each employee. Use your cursor to see a list of items your organization should keep for at least four years. Look at that! Look how fast I am. To review the record keeping section on Boom. page five of publication fifteen, employer's tax guide. When you're ready, select the continue button to move forward. All right, just because I want to be thorough, I'm gonna read through this. 
Record keeping, your EIN, allocated tips, employment dates for each employee, fair market value of in-kind wages paid, return files and confirmation numbers, amounts of tips reported to you by employees, amounts, details of, amounts, dates of all wages, annuity, and pension payments, names, addresses, social security numbers, and occupations of employees' recipients, employee copies of forms W-2 and W-2C returned and as under deliverable, Copies of employees' recipients' income tax withholding allocate, or allowance certificates. Copies of employees' earned income credit advance payment certificates. Dates, amounts of tax deposits made. Acknowledgement numbers for deposits made by EFTPS periods when employee recipients were paid while absent due to sickness, injury, and the amount and weekly rate of payments you or third-party payers made to them. I take a couple breaths in the middle of that one. Right. Records of friendage. What? <laughs> friendage. It's like they tried to type. It's like they typoed fridge and then went back and forgot to delete the, delete the D after they added the N in there. <laughs> you know what I think this is? What's that? No one's PowerPoint? ever. This is a test. And like, there's like a secret multi-million dollar winning for whoever finds all these errors, and we're gonna become millionaires by telling them that probably, they're that's probably it. That, yep, right. that, that's that's that, that is totally how this works. Yep, <laughs> records of friendage. I'm actually writing this on my whiteboard so that I can email them because I wanted to the la yeah. last couple times, but I was like, I blew it off, and like now I'm like, you know. You know, they're starting to get a little, a little uh, ridiculous now, a little bit lazy. Right. That's quite a list. Is that all? Not quite. There are also records to keep for FICA taxes and for FUDA, even though 501c3s don't pay FUDA. Good Here's to know. A list of what to keep for each of these taxes. Thank you, Lazel. With all this information in hand, I'm better prepared to handle the tax responsibilities that my 501c3 organization has towards its employees. Select the continue button to move forward. I'm gonna sniff those two. You got it? Yeah, I got it. I know that 501c3s don't normally have to withhold and pay taxes for independent contractors, but there are two exceptions. What are the exceptions? Choose two of these answers, then select Just to go a little quicker, I'm not going to read through these right now. Because I'm, right. they're pretty cool. Like, what are the two exceptions? We have them right back up here. There was two exceptions, and it was... Um, independent contractor um, doesn't provide social security number or employment identification number, which is this one. Yep. And the IRS tells organization the numbers provided are incorrect. Those other two are, yeah. are not it. That's correct. Yes, what, what that's right. Know? And notif and if the IRS notifies you that the number was incorrect, you should back up withhold at the rate of 28%. Ugh, so hefty. That's so weird that they're like, hey, if we tell you this thing, just magically pull 28% of that value back um, into your account <laughs> post- it it'll be fine but no really r really it's it's what we said earlier we have to just preemptively are, already have a third of whatever we pay out just held aside now that my five that'd be the smart way has the yep documentation what steps do we take to anything like i said anything we can decide ahead of time so people don't have to argue about it later <laughs> exactly that's why i want to do all this shit submit button to see if you're correct all right. Now that my 501c3 has correct documentation, what steps do we take to report payments to our independent contractor and to the IRS? Report all payments on form 1099 miscellaneous as non-employee wage. Send to independent contractor by January 31st for all payments made in the previous calendar year. Send a copy to the IRS by January 31st for all payments made in the previous calendar year if reporting payments in box 7. <sighs> is it all of them? It is. Use Form 1096 Annual Summary and Transmittal of U.S. Information Returns to deliver your 1099 miscellaneous to the IRS. Wow, I should do this professionally. <laughs> Hell yeah, there we go. Woo! I didn't even look at that. I should have looked at that, my bad. But yeah, we got them all right. That's perfect. Sweet. If my organization
organization fails to file a correct Form 1099 miscellaneous by the due date without a reasonable cause, what is the penalty and what is the maximum penalty total? Select the most appropriate answer, then click the Submit button to see if you are correct. Oh, that's B. That's definitely B. I remember that number, 100. Yep. 100 for each document. But there's no limit if you do it on purpose. Yep. Oh, I did. Oh, it did. Oh, come on. No. <laughs> My bad, dude. My bad, dude. I thought it. I thought if I clicked the play, it would do the answer. Oops. All right. We know we had that one. The funny thing is, I don't even have to read this question to know the answer. I know it's 28% because we didn't talk about a single other percentage all day today other than 28%. The question. The question. It's probably asking how much should you withhold or back up withhold if your 1099 miscellaneous isn't filed correctly. Um, it's 28%. Yep, and yeah. that's exactly what they're talking about. That's right. <laughs> woo, woo. Let's go over what we can discuss regarding independent contractors. First, I pointed out that while all organizations must report payments made to independent contractors, most organizations don't have to withhold taxes for them, but there are two important exceptions. Both are related to the independent contractor supplying incorrect identification numbers. You also learn that 501c3s may need to meet IRS and state information reporting requirements and that it's important to have independent contractors complete Form W-9, Request for Taxpayer Identification Number and Certification, to determine corporation status. Next, we reviewed the Form 1099 miscellaneous. It's oh, so the W-9 kind of prevents what we were saying. From there, we saw how not having a proper W-9 and 1099 miscellaneous can result gotcha. in the organization paying backup withholding taxes to the IRS using its own resources. Don't forget that we also went over a list of records that must be kept for four years including federal oh. income. I'm actually going to take a picture of FUTA this taxes. as well. Even I don't remember them saying the four years part. Oh, this right here. Um, are you not, you're not looking at the stream. Um, it's the Wait, income. I, I in have to look at the stream actually. No. Uh, yeah. Okay. So on the right, right here, income tax recording, this right over here. Yep. It says keep employment tax records for at least four years. And then it lists all of these. Oh, I missed that. I missed the four years part. Yeah. I must have just assumed uh, three years with every like everything else is. You know what would be smart is if I I, I took screen caps of all of these recaps. I I I've taken a couple of them. I think I'm gonna like in our uh in our notes. So like if people are going back through and looking at this. Yeah, I have. I've taken a couple screen caps of from this round. Yeah. Just because I thought it might well be helpful. Done. You've learned that I most agree. 501c3s don't have to withhold and report taxes for independent contractors, but there are two exceptions that involve improper identification. You discovered that 501c3s may need to meet IRS and state information reporting requirements on payments it made to an independent contractor. You also learned about Form 1099 Miscellaneous, its function, and the possible penalties from its improper use. Finally, you learned about the records you must keep for federal income, FICA, and FUTA taxes for at least four years. Yay. The continue button to move forward. We got all that? Yep, yep. We covered a lot of resources Ooh, during this course. Awesome resources. Feel free to go back and review Nice. Them. When you're done, select the continue button to move forward. Know who you are hiring. Know your contractor. I think I have. How many of those forms do you already have open? Almost all of them, <laughs> except for these two and this one. Oh, because it's dead. Oh, that was the one with the screwed up link, right? No, there's a there's a few of them. Oh, yeah, that one has a. They're all screwed up in the same way, at least. Uh. Got that junk at the end of the URL. So let's see. We have. That one. Uh, oh, 
Are they? Are they all like Why that? do they all have a percent 20? It would percent 20 even in its that space. All right, so um, that sucks. Uh, fuck all those then. Oh yeah, percent twenty space. Someone put Sorry. a space on at the end. URL of encoding. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Come on, IRS. That's not All the right. attention to detail that you expect from us. No, these, the, th this is not well organized. Fuck all that last one. <laughs> in the IRS exempt organizations division, thank you for taking this course. You're welcome. You leave, please take a minute to send us your. Oh, I'm gonna send you your feedback. <laughs> you provide. Will ensure you got it. And other courses. And I expect my millions. Provide a valuable learning experience for future participants. Please use this button to send us an email. Fix your shit. After you've sent your feedback, you can print out a certificate of completion as recognition for attending this course. Yeah, you have to send your feedback first, then print the certificate. Hey, look, it's sideways again. <laughs> oh, boy. And today is the 20th of February, 22. Yay. Uh, download, download, print. Oh my god! Print the PDF. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait! We need Bro. A space before and after, right? Bro, oh, is that what it was before and after? I think. And that, that was to that center it. Center. That was centering it. Yeah, after I had uh, rotated it in uh, Adobe. Oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Okay, well, I got it downloaded, you know. Uh, it's never easy. They, can't <laughs> they couldn't... Even the certificate's broken. Come on, IRS. Oh, yeah, I got to write that down, too. Shit. Oh, yeah. There, there's some more feedback for them. Ah, uh, well, shit. Okay, that one was a little bit more on the what the fuck IRS side than the other ones have been, but it also had a lot more detailed information, even though it did not clarify this whole bullshit between statutory employees, tax, the whole process. I am so not happy about that, but thank you for your joining, Kiss, and thank you anybody else that checked it out. I'm actually going to go through this real quick, just slide Welcome by slide. Back. Just to, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, the next uh, sections were just as detailed since um, I'm assuming that's what we're doing now is getting into all the details yes. of that overview that we did. Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly one what. Two sections. Yep. Uh, all yeah. the Forbes. All the Forbes. Yeah. So I'm just going to I'm just going to check through this real fast, but fucking hell that that was fun that was so much fun hell yeah oh is this the, the little bit of stuff that i missed um yeah this was at the very beginning for uh what classifies of uh an employee versus independent contractor awesome i'll probably just uh, Rewatch uh, the vid just to catch what I didn't, what I didn't, I'm gonna, what I missed earlier. I'm gonna actually listen back through this real fast one more time. But you don't have to hang out if you don't want to. I'm just gonna. Such as the president, vice president, secretary, or treasurer, as employees, and your 501c3 must classify them the same way for tax purposes if they are paid to perform their duties. A 501c3 shouldn't classify corporate officers as employees if they perform no services or only minor services and they don't receive nor are entitled to compensation. By contrast, the code defines the board of directors of a corporation. Uh, okay. 
I think this is maybe defined as employees or non-employees by statute. A president, vice president, secretary, or treasurer receiving payment is considered an employee. Corporate officer. But they're considered a statutory employee. Well, well, so like that's that's just uh, uh, means that there's like if if something falls inside of this, then it just is that thing, whether or not what you say it is. You know, like you could like uh, say you're sure. a volunteer, but if you do all the things that are within this thing, then oh no, you're not a volunteer. Gotcha. Non employees. So your 501c3 must classify them as independent contractors or volunteers for tax purposes. This applies if your organization pays its board members to attend board meetings or otherwise compensates them for performing their duties as directors. Select the continue button to learn more about categorizing officers. More broadly, the term officers for federal tax purposes includes anyone who holds a position of trust, authority, or command within an organization. Note that many 501c3s have officers who are volunteers and work without compensation. The 501c3 may pay these officers reimbursement or an allowance for out-of-pocket expenses. So if the 501c3 requires an officer to attend a convention representing the 501c3, they might pay for the trip. Similarly, a 501c3 may provide a monthly allowance to an officer for automobile use. There are two methods your organization may use to pay an account for these reimbursements and allowances, the accountable and non-accountable methods. Each is treated differently for tax purposes. Can you give me an example of the difference? Sure. Workers categorized as independent contractors, not as employees, may also fall under the subsection of statutory employees. The following are considered statutory employees. awards or gifts. In general, if these are non-cash items, let's look at an example. Here's a, in this here's a, let's go over what you've covered. Hmm. It still doesn't say anything about not withholding their taxes yet, so I guess that's in the next part. Hopefully. Did you check your, uh, that, the, the, what's it called? The document version of it, of all this? Oh, good call. I think we did find extra details in, in year four. Yes, yes, yes. All right, I want to recap this picture real fast. Perfect. I'm going to actually take off here. Or I'm going to go hit up the grocery store. Very nice. Well, thank you very much, Kiss. I appreciate you for joining, and we'll be back at it next week. Awesome. Yay. Can't wait to Can't wait to learn more. <laughs> All right, bro. Thank you again. I'll see you then. Yeah, peace. And anyone else still watching? You're screwed because I'm, I'm I'm figuring this out right now. All right, so let's get this uh, posted up under the recap.
Statutory employees. Only officers receiving payments are employees. To employees must pay federal employment taxes on those wages. These taxes are Federal Income Tax and Federal Insurance Contributions Act, known as FICA, taxes. Note that 501c3s are normally exempt from paying Federal Unemployment Tax Act or FUTA tax. Your 501c3 generally must withhold and pay federal income tax from its employees' wages. 501c3 shouldn't withhold income tax for statutory employees. For more information, see Publication 15, Circular E, Employer's Tax Guide, and Publication 15A, Employee Supplemental Tax Guide. To figure out how much federal income tax to withhold, employers should ask employees to complete Form W-4, Employees Withholding Allowance Certificate. Ask each new employee to complete and sign a W-4 by his or her first day of work. Some of these taxes can be a bit confusing. Let me explain how they work. FICA taxes go to... Now I know what taxes to withhold. Is that all I have to do? Not quite. Once your 501c3 deposit... There's another... Look at this example. Here's a... Which... Let's review. All right, so at this point, we're just going over this midway recap. Got the first two, or the first one and the last one done. Got it pretty much done for everything. But that, that, oh man, that is such a big question for me. And I feel like I might actually have to talk to someone that knows professionally the best answer. Because I, I, I can look this up, but it's one of those things where I don't want to guess any kind of guess at all. All right, and what we're talking about here is... <laughs> 501, 501c3 does not withhold and pay taxes for statutory employees. Statutory employees, only officers receiving payments are employees. Does not withhold and pay taxes for statutory employees. Statutory employees are only officers receiving payments are employees. I think what that is saying is that their employees, if they're paid, they're, and they should be employees if they're doing jobs that should be paid. <sighs> All right. I'm calling it on that. I'm calling it on that. We're going to research the 501c3 statutory employee tax withheld process because that I'm not 100% on. I'm not. We have it right here. Right here, statutory employees, only officers receiving payments are employees, which would mean we would withhold their taxes. However, then right here it says does not withhold and pay taxes for statutory employees. But does that mean that when it says statutory employees, only officers receiving payments are employees, does that mean that they are withheld by us or not? I don't know. All right. So that is where we will call it today. Appreciate everyone for being a part of this and cheers. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy learning about taxes.